Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Buy Around Interview Show. We are joined by one of the game's greats, the best front rower of an era, a Hall of Famer, and current media darling. Oh, oh, mate, current media imposter. That's what it is, mate. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't believe that I'm still doing what I'm doing. Honestly, can't they put me out the pasture or something? Honestly. How good is it? <laughs> Stephen Blocker Roach, how are you? James, it is a pleasure to be on your uh, on your podcast, mate. I've been listening to them all and, mate, you're doing a great job. So, mate, it is my pleasure to be here. Mate, you, you know what you've already won the award for? What? Best Dressed. Oh, mate, this is me. This is me normal club, mate. Best best Dressed yeah? guest you know by what? Far. You know what? But, James, one of my nicknames amongst a, a million of them is the man for all seasons. You know why? No. If I go to golf, I've got the golfing gear on. If I go sailing, I've got the sailing gear on. I'm one of those sort of guys. What, what does a what, what does Blocker Roach wear for sailing? And so, uh, Hang on a minute. So, Let's just go back. Mate, wait, wait, wait. wait polo, hang on. polos. What, where, where are you going sailing at? Mate, have you seen where we live? On the harbour? Hello? Don't you go on boats on the harbour in Sydney? Not really, no. Well, mate, I'm going to have to educate you. Like, what do you what do you do I, all day? I, 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 I don't mind sitting out and looking at them, but getting on them. Oh, no, don't just, worry, mate. I got one. Can't, can't afford it, mate. Can't afford it, mate. You're, mate. Please, I'm the bloke that's licking the dates off the calendar, <laughs> not you. You're going all right. So you go. No, I'm doing you. Do you actually go sailing? <laughs> no, of course I don't. But if I do, I'll wear the gear. you, you, you got all the, all the gear, yeah, right? Yeah. I've got all the gear and no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are very well dressed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this you, is for you, you did, mate. You didn't have to. You didn't have to. You have got a nice watch on. You have shined your shoes. Obviously, you can see the state of mine. James, are you are you a bit like me? I, I sh- I'm glad you picked that up because I reckon I'm one of the old school. But do you reckon blokes still shine their shoes? No, I do. The devil's in the detail. I do. I like it. They yeah. make it. They make a difference, and people do notice. Do you reckon? I think some people if they can see their faces in your shoes. Mm. Mm. They are very, very. They, well. they, they, they almost look yeah. new. Well, they're not. I've mm. nearly worn them. I mean, if you have a look at the back and the soles, they've worn out a bit. But anyway, yeah. I digress. I um, I I, I love it. Um, I've done plenty of research, or I've tried to do plenty of research on your blocker. Mm. Uh, plenty of avenues we could go down, and we will. Yes. But I just before we get into your career, just talking to you. You've got a real love of the game. Yeah. It's clear after, you know, seeing you around the traps and spending some time with you, you love this game, don't you? I love it. You know what? Even, you know, lucky enough to still do the Fox stuff and turn it up on Friday night footy, mate. I get, mate, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I'm telling you. I love going to the game. I love, I love being at the game. I love the contest. I love... You know, blokes going at it. Uh, mate, it all started for me as a, as a young kid, like seven-year-old. When I was a kid, everyone played cricket and footy. That was it. There was no other sports. And we used to have a little hall, a little square hallway in my house and we'd play knees footy every Saturday, yeah, every sa- at half time, every Saturday. Would you believe, James, there was only ever one match of the day that they showed? Now, how blessed are we? We see every yeah. game every week. You know, we're sport for, we're sport for it now. But, you know... You know, I used to idolise, you know, Langlands and Fulton because they were from Wollongong where I was from. You know, Langlands and Fulton and Beetson and, mate, all those guys and, you know, Johnny Raper and I'd get up I'd get up to watch Australia play the English. You know, we'd get up with me old man and that and we'd be sitting there at three in the morning, you know, as a kid and, you know, just watching the game. But, mate, mate I fell in love with the game at an early age and, mate, I still I still got a passion for it. I love it. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. And how good's a, a little bit of a knee, fo- knee footy? Knee footy, oh, yeah. Just oh. the carpet bands. Mate, and I'll tell you. The, I, uh, oh, the, I, some of those. <laughs> so I'm just itching my <laughs> knee now because I'm it? just thinking about it. When you, when, you go for, when you go for it and <laughs> yeah, you move too fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> slam, the, slam dunk the tries. But um, the, the, the thing was, you know, Graham Langlands, this is a little, little boy story because uh, this is what we're doing here is telling stories, is um, Graham Langlands used to have Adidas as his, as his uh, sp- sponsor. And I used to, mate, love Graham Langlands and that. And my, my mum would go down to K- Kmart and buy these plastic boots with four stripes on them and she would pick the stripes so I'd have the three stripes so I'd be the same as him. Do you know that? How good. How good. Just as a, like a seven-year-old yeah. or whatever. 
Yeah, but mate, and, and, you know, I, I don't even know, you know, if these guys today or blokes who have played before understand how much, how much blokes or young kids idolise them. You know. Mm. Yeah. I, it is. It is weird because even, you know, I've I've said this before, and and I work with the guy now, Gordon Tallis. Like, oh. I, he had a pair of um, black and orange boots, yeah. and 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 the, a lot of the Broncos <laughs> players did. Yeah. And I can just remember like mithering and pestering my dad, like I've got to get I've got these to get boots. Them. I've got. Oh, I've dad, got to please. get them. Please. I put all my birthday Christmas money in. I. Yeah. They, I didn't. I didn't want. That's all I wanted was yeah. a pair of these, yeah. the, the same boots. So you were cut with the same cloth, mate. Yeah, just like, just, yeah. It, but I guess then when you're in that moment of, you know, being a, a, a I guess a, a player, you, yeah. you can, you can forget a little bit. You show your appreciation, but yeah. um, it's, it's how we grow, a lot of us yeah. grow up in that, yeah. that love of the game yeah. and that, you idolise these these people. Who was you your see. favourite player, mate? I used to love, obviously, watching Gordon Tallis. Yeah, yeah. Um, then for St. Helens. Yeah, you work with him. How good is that? Yeah, yeah. Well, What mate, about for Saints? Mate, even at St. Helens, I I got to play with some of the people that I was literally, I stood on the wall. Oh, sorry, like sat on the wall, like yeah. front and centre. of the. Yeah. So St. Helens, Nosey yeah. Road, the old ground, yeah. was a wall. Can we please a, be one of them it was one a, day? It was, a ra- yeah. it was a race to get on yeah. and sit on the wall and yeah. watch Saints. Yeah. I used to watch them and I got to play with some of them and meet some of them after yeah. it. People yeah, keep calling like them, Apollo Perolini, yeah. you know, the Chris Joint. We, like, um, we, it was uh, so, it, it was, yeah. you know, like, a bizarre memory. From mm. being a kid, mm. I can remember the St. Helens mascot, St. Bernard. Yeah, he'd go around the wall and pass the ball to. Yeah. And I can remember Wait, one of my one ball. of my old oldest memories is being. I think I was eight, and the St. Helens mascot passed me the ball and I passed it back. And I was like, yeah, mate, in, in this big, in this big thing, and I'm like, yeah, I can remember that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mate, we um we in nineteen nineteen eighty six or ninety one of the tours we were on. I can't remember. Mal had played at St. Helens. For yes, a year. he did. Yeah. He made their team of the century from one year. Anyway, and, and I'll talk a little bit about, you know, going to grounds now. You go underneath and you get off the bus yeah. and, you you know, you, you go and no one sees you. When we used to play against, like, St Helens and all the club sides and all that sort of stuff, we'd we'd pull up in the, our kangaroos bus and we'd, we'd pull up outside the sheds and we'd get off the bus and we'd go in. This day we played at St Helens. I reckon, without a word of a lie, there was 5,000 people around the bus Waiting to see Mal Meninga, and they were all singing. There's only one Mal Meninga, mm. and we we're, were like, "What? This mm. is unbelievable!" And then you know, obviously, you get off the bus, and Mal's like, "Mate, he's like a god." Yeah, yeah. What a great captain. Yeah. But then into the dressing rooms, do your thing, get changed. But one one of the one of the great things in footy for me was going over to England and playing against all the club sides. I loved it. Yeah, those old, old mate, school it was, mate, it was old school. And, mate, you know, it, mate, we'd play in club games against Wigan and, and Warrington and all. Mate, it'd be 50,000 people there. Mm. I can actually remember. Unbelievable. Yeah, I can remember going to watch um, New Zealand play St. Helens yeah. uh, on like a Tuesday night, Wednesday night or yeah, something in the off-season. Well, obviously it was the off-season for Saints. Yeah. But it was, you just, it's unfortunately, yeah. You don't get that anymore. Well, I wish you know, like oh, you know, I hear about all this about oh, mate, the players are playing too many games and all that. That's what I do. I want to play. Mm. That's what I do, mate. I'd rather I'd rather play than train. Absol- absolutely, absolutely. Let me play. Yeah, I'll be ready. Ex- extend my season games wise. Let me play. You get paid more money. Yeah, exactly. So there'd be more if there's more games on. Yeah, you get more money and you have to train less. I'll tell you what I I'll couldn't sign up for that. I'll tell you what I couldn't believe in in because uh, I'd come from 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 here and went over to England and played at Warrington, and um, we're playing against Wigan, and they go, mate, this is the this is the big game, Wigan, mate. I'm there early, I'm dressed, everything. They go, what are you doing? I said, mate, I'm, mate, I'm ready to play. Let, I want to play, mate. They, you've told me how big this game is. They go, we haven't talked to the board about how much money we're on yet. I went, what do you mean? He said, Mike Gregory, he's going to go in and talk to the uh, talk to the board. All right, come back in. He goes, righto, boys, get ready. We're on 500 quid. We're like, <laughs> honestly, I couldn't believe it. But it was, mate, you know what it was? It was, I shouldn't really say this, but it was an incentive to play better because there was a difference between getting 70 quid next Thursday or 500. Yeah, yeah. Give me the 500, mm. mate. Exactly. Yeah. And I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe, um, like, the gear steward. Like, 
I, I, I couldn't believe. I loved it. I couldn't believe going to a game in my uh, in my in my clogger with my, my jacket on, my Warrington jacket on, and my gum shield. That was it. Just rock on. Because I'd rock up and my boots would be clean, and I'd have you'd have your jumper there. Oh, man, I couldn't believe that. Did they, did you not have that? Here? Never had that. No. Bring your own gear. My missus used to hide me socks. <laughs> my shorts and socks. So you bring your own plain jersey. No, not not jerseys, Jer- not jerseys, but socks and yeah, yeah. socks. And, mate, you, mate, oh, it was nearly a war if you wanted a new pair of socks back in the day at, yeah. to, at the Tigers. Honestly, <laughs> mate, you had to well, fight the gear steward well, mate, for a some pair of, the, of socks. Mate, some of the gear stewards, they've old habits die hard. Yeah. I know little Mick down at the Dragons, Fred Seraldo, yeah. the dogs, the two people that I was involved with yeah. over here. Like they pilfer gear, like I oh, know. Like it, it, it's it's like you yeah. ask for something, yeah, and it's literally like yeah, you, it's coming out of their pocket, yeah. and you're like, mate, mate, but you, you've got you've got <coughs> a, you've got a container full of stuff in there, and mm. just you can see my training tops ripped. Yeah, I need a new one. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh. mate. What about when you? It's your job. Yeah. Just, just go and get, get me. What, like, but, what's the big what, deal? But, it's not yours. But what about when you're in playing mode and you're like you're a little bit. Like edgy, and they won't give you a new pair of socks and that. You want to drive their edge through the locker room, well, mate, don't you? Hey, I I used to wear you know the new the the trendy grip socks. Yeah, yeah. So I used to have to. I remember you used to wear them over the top, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So, but to, for the club, what socks, did you do that for? Grip, grip or blisters? Oh, no, 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 no. Just grip, but mm. f- for the club socks, I used to have to cut them. Oh, mate. Oh, you cut the socks, they'd be so, filthy. So I'd say, oh, can you just pull the socks? I'm just going to cut them. And it was like, what? 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 Why are you cutting them? I was like, I'll just put over. And literally looking at, like, de- devastation. De- devastation. You're, you're damaging like, our gear, yeah. Well, what, what are we going to do? Are you going to use these next week? Um, like, if they wash, you know, yeah, whatever. If they wash up or yeah, what, yeah. yeah. Who yeah. cares? A pair of socks. Like, just... I love it. Mm. I love M- it. Multi-billion dollar gear um, game. Yeah. You know, club gets all this yeah. grant money. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, you can't make oh. the socks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, God oh, forgive you. Ask mate, for a new pair of shorts. That's mate, even worse. Yeah, mate, some of them are blow. Some of the the gear stewards I've seen them. They'd see the team list come out, and you know, and it's like, oh no, he's oh. a punish. He wants. Why, he wants some. No, gear. why is why is why is he changing number eight and ten? Yeah. Or why is you know oh, if, yeah. some, if some, you know if there's a, off. you know or if uh, the bench you know you're gonna or oh, you're gonna be starting on the bench this week so there's a new number eight yeah. different body size you'd yeah. see them be like yeah oh now I've got to go <laughs> oh that you you're a, you're an XL and he's a double XL yeah. oh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to oh, put a new number on the how back b- now. how bad's this oh. yeah I know, I know I'm with you oh sorry I'm with you. <laughs> sorry they get it for nothing yeah, yeah. Hey, well, this is this is the thing. Yeah. It's not their gear. It's yeah. it's it's the players' gear. Yeah, yeah. Let them have it. I can remember. I can remember going to the Tigers, and this was a good thing. They uh, when I first went to the Tigers as a, as a boy, and you couldn't get into the first grade team change room unless you were in the first grade team. There was different, mm. made different lockers, and then they'd what they'd do sometimes with the they'd have all the greats of the of the club with their names on the locker, and mate, I got it. Got to get my name on that locker. I've got to somehow. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to get my name on that locker one day. You know, just little. I don't know. Just, just it thing. doesn't probably sound much to people, but if mm. you're if you're striving to try and get somewhere, mm. those little things. I reckon those little things yeah. help. You know, you do. Even even that, mate. <clears throat> you talk about your love of the game. I don't know about you, but I used to genuinely get excited about the new gear, the oh, new so training I. gear. Like, oh, what have we got? Mate, what's it look like? Mate, even if mate, Big Zero, is a, he runs all the juniors at Balmain now, he always gets a top for me, right, for the junior. Like the, I'm not a, he gives me a It's a freaking tracksuit yeah. top, but, mate, he's a new one and it's got like black and gold never fold yeah. on the back and I'm like, oh, mate, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> you know. But it's true. Well, mate, like, you know, I can't come from a background where we used to have to like well, like I say, I'd save up all me, me Christmas and birthday money and, yeah. and go and buy all the St. Helens gear. But isn't that but isn't that the foundation of what everything's about and how you are now? Mm. Yeah. Oh, I reckon it is. Yeah, it's a it's a look it comes from a love of the game. And a and a respect thing, you know. When I, if I see if I see Bob McCarthy or mate, I'm still I'm mm. mate, I'm sixty one. <laughs> and I see Bob McCarthy and like I'm like like a little kid. You can say hello to me, I'm like you know, <laughs> Funny, isn't it? It is. Weird. It, it, Weird. Really, it really is. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> we have digressed a little bit, but that was a uh, good chat. Um, the name Blocker. Can you clear the air? 
Oh, mate, it's very embarrassing. Um, Alan McMahon, who was a, a Balmain fullback, played for Australia in 1978, Kangaroos. Uh, there was a bloke in Wollongong that, that brought me up to Sydney named Noel Yeomans. So I used to get a, I used to get a, uh, a lift with, with, uh, with Alan when I was like 18 or 17, 17 and a half or whatever when I first come. So we'd drive up from Wollongong. I think he would, only took me because he'd get on the cans after the thing and I'd drive, drive home, you know, that kid. And uh, he, he framed the name Blockhead. And I said, well, I can't go. It's probably well fitted too, I suppose. But, um, yeah, you can't go for your old career name, that, can you? So, so we sort of shortened it down slowly and, you know, got into it and yeah. blocker stuck. So Fair yeah, enough. That's how it started. And a kid growing up in the gong, you idolised um, the, the players there. How did you end up at Balmain? That's what I was saying. A bloke named Noel Yeomans actually coached Keith Barnes in Wollongong. See, there's a connection there with Keith Barnes playing in Wollongong, and uh, I was playing playing the juniors with his with his stepson, a bloke named Mark David. Anyway, we got to like under seventeens and all that, and Barnesy must have said to him, "Mate, you got any blokes down here? You reckon to go right up here?" And and uh, next minute, the great Keith Barnes is knocking at my door at my home with Noel. Mate, you want to go to Sydney? I'm like, what, what are we on, on a trip? Go, what, are we on to watch the Tigers play or something? They said, no, I want you to come and play. And in those days, you had to play two years in the juniors. So I had to play two years in the juniors to qualify in the under-17s and 18s. And then you go at on to Green. At Balmain, yeah. That's in club side, you had to play if you're a young bloke or like a young import or whatever. You weren't a local. You had to, yeah, you had to qualify so I qualified for a couple of years, and then and then um, the next year I went into grade. Yeah, and that's how that's how it all kicked off. Yeah, wow. When, when did that change? Oh, mate, I think I'm, you know what? That's a good question. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure, but they used to. If you weren't a local, you you know you got an import spot, or you had to play uh, two years in the juniors to qualify as a junior. And that's what yeah, that's that's how I started. Yeah. Pretty weird, eh? Yeah, very strange. Yeah, very strange. Very strange. <clears throat> um, That's how long ago it is, James. <laughs> yeah. So you, you come through. I want to ask you about life as a young front rower coming through in the um, <sighs> Mate. early 80s. What, first, what, was the, what was the treatment like? What was the welcoming like? My first two years was survival. Um, playing in the front row at 20, 21. Just as a, as a young fellow, I'll give you an I'll give you an example. A lot of people listening now, if they're footy heads, would remember the great Dallas Donnelly and Les Boyd and all that sort of stuff, mate. If you played those guys at Pratton Park, unbelievable. Or if you played St George with Craig Young and Rod Rod Reddy and all that, you used to get up and play the ball. You would not dare put your hand on the ground because they jump on it and break every bone in your hand. But it was, it, mate, it was survival. But what it did was. Taught you whether you can, you know, whether you can go with it or not. Um, I uh, yeah, mate, it was um, it was pretty violent. Um, my first test match against New Zealand in Queensland was violent, mate. That was the the test that uh, Kevin Tammany punched the shit out of Greg Dowling on the sideline. That was my first ever test. I was twenty two, and uh, mate, they must have had a target on me here because every time a stink or something started, one of them would run past me and like just king hit me. Broke me bloody nose bad and smashed me. But it was the way it was then, you know. Uh, even even in Origin, like when we started playing Origin, like the first thirty minutes was a fight, and then a game of footy broke out. That's how <laughs> that's how it was. But that's how we that's yeah. how we thought. But going right back and and going the, the, in nineteen eighty um, was the first ever state of Origin, and people going this won't work, this won't work. Anyway, I played in the under 18s before the first, there was that the crowd was that big because what happened was all the Queenslanders like Beetson and Reddy and all that always played for New South Wales. So how the origin started, they were Queenslanders originally and then they were brought back to Queensland. So 1980, first ever, we play in the under-18s, we finish our game. The crowd was that big at Lang Park. I can't call it Suncorp, so I've got to call it Lang Park. And the crowd was that big that they sat all the under-18s on the side so on the sideline. So we sat on the grass. And out runs this mate. I, mate, I, mate, I thought it was like um, it was like this superhero runs out. Arthur boots and the boot polish under his eyes, white powder all over him, snot and every shit coming out of him. And mate, he bashed the whole New South Wales pack on his own. And that's how Origin was bought. 
was born. So without Tom Redonicus and Arthur Beats, and Tommy was New South Wales captain, Arthur was Queensland captain, without those two guys and the way that they the way that the teams went at each other, Origin would not be what it is today without those guys. So every time Origin's on, you know, we pay homage to, you know, the the people that, you know, that from this land and all that sort of stuff. I say let's pay homage every Origin to those two guys because mm. they started it. And it was born from hate. It was born from, mate. What well, was born from, it was born from New South Wales with Queensland players in their team playing against yeah. Queensland and beating them by 50, you know, and it was a bit of a bit of a like a bit of a laughing stock, but when they got their own men back and they went right over. Mm. Now it's on. And Arthur was unbelievable, but <coughs> pardon me, out of that was born mate, out of that was born a 20-year-old Chris Close, Mal Meninga, Kerry Bostead, Wally Lewis. Mate, all of a sudden all these 20-year-old kids and they were playing with Arthur Mate, you should have seen. Mate, you should have seen how good these blokes were. <laughs> Choppy Close and Meninga and all that. McGee Miles, and all of a sudden, these twenty-year-olds play play Origin for a decade and make their make the legends of Origin. Yeah, and you had a front row seat. Front row seat, mate. Just, very very just going, mate. But it's funny how things work out, isn't it? You know, like mm. so you're, you, you, know when you you know when you're watching that game, are you thinking that's where I want to be? Oh, mate, I was terrified. Really? I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is like, it was barbaric it was. Yeah. <laughs> I was meant to, mate, honestly, if you ever, mate, if you ever get the chance, look at the first game of Origin ever. Mm. Mate, it was, it was horrifying. And then, uh, and then you know, lucky enough, I mean, it's, only, it's only like three years down the track, I'm driving to Lang Park past Caxon Street getting showered with cans and, you know, <laughs> Getting blokes trying to bash you as you're walking in. Because you used to have to walk in at Lang Park. You'd walk through their main bar and then through these turnstiles into the dressing rooms. Mate, daunting, daunting place. Because everyone want to kill you. Yeah. You know? So, but, but you know, I'll, I'll never ever did forget. It, did it ever get close to going? Sorry, go, go yeah, on. Go, I, I, I'll never ever forget the two things. The deafening sound of the fireworks going off as the two teams come on. And the steel studs on the cement running down the race to go on, mate. I'll never forget it. It was like a, it was like a like a march of soldiers ready to go. You know, mm. never forget it. Mm. Did it ever? Eerie. Did it ever get close to kicking off? In when, in with the punters. Oh, I'd, I'd say so, mate. There was used to be mad blokes running with New South Wales flags up the side, and they'd get pulled no, with cans. But you, but you guys walking. Ah, uh, no, no, no. It's pretty. It's it's yeah. It's. There was a, enough of respect. There's there. a respect, yeah. but it was, mate, they mate, they ain't us. Don't worry about that. It's a, mate. It's a, a very very unique um, sporting thing that happens in Australia. You mm. know, the, the origin is. I don't know. It's 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 a yeah. It's a hate thing. They hate us, mate. Yeah. The power of hate is incredibly strong. Oh yeah, but but I, I don't know. If, if you've been you've been to an origin yeah, up there, yeah, yeah, mate. Obviously, yeah. but but it, it, you know, you, it's great men that are doctors and lawyers and everything. We've got their maroon jumpers on, like in Sydney, like no, no truly, yeah. in Sydney they wouldn't do it. It's a bit like I don't know. It's a mate. I, I admire the way that they get behind mm. their their people. Last year in game three to decide up. Um, I went up there with um, with Aristocrat, the poker machine mob, just to mate, tell a few yarns about. Anyway, I went to the ground. We're sitting in the outer ground, mate. I was I was worried about walking in and just getting happy because we sat in the outer ground and that. But mate, they were they were fine. They were fantastic. But you could still feel that you can still feel that little bit of hatred there. You know? Do you think origins are not that far away? Do you think um, think it means more to Queenslanders? You know, uh, that's a hard, that's a that's a good question. If you if you ask the players about what they would be willing to do, I think the Queenslanders might be willing to do just that little bit more. If you look back in hindsight of since nineteen eighty, um, to me, they look at us like you know you live on the harbour and you're a bit posh and you you know the sponsorship and the you know the whereas they. Their whole motive is footy. Do, mm. do you understand that? I, I don't know. Sometimes we might, and mate, now I love New South Wales, of course, but sometimes we might get caught up in a little bit of the, um, what I, I don't know how to say it properly, like the glamour of it. Whereas the, they, the side, the side where, show. Whereas they, they're killers, mate. 
Mm. I want to kill you. They got they got kids sit on their grandfather's laps and they tell them war torn stories about Beaton and and uh, we don't we they're legends up there. I'll give you an example, James. I've been out. You mentioned Gordy before. He's a great mate of mine. I've been out with them blokes before. Any pub in Queensland we go in, he goes, mate, keep your money in your pocket. What, what do you mean? I said, mate, we don't buy, we don't buy a beer up here. Forex, Forex, give us, you know, in in pubs. Like because they're, mate, the legendary of of Queensland, you know, of mm. legends of Queensland, mate. You, mate, they charge you double down here. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't care less. No, no, I'm saying, mate. Maybe I'm saying that, that there's a lot more things to do down here, whereas footy's everything. Yeah, to them. football is life. Yeah, is life. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't know. It's hard to explain. You sitting back and watching it. What's your what's what's your sort of take on it? What do you sort of like? What do you see? Well, look, I've I've watched it from afar over the over the years on TV. I used to, I've told this story before. So it was on it. Sky Sports used to put it on at ten thirty in the morning. Yeah. Um. So I'd do the old pretend I was walking to school. Do the double back. Love it. You turn back, yeah. throw it on. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I always tuned in. Um, or then, it, like, when I was starting playing at Saints, we'd, all, we'd train most Wednesdays. Yeah. And it'd be like, right, lads, no one mentioned the score. And everyone would rush back and, and watch it we'd at watch home it. After, yeah, we'd, yeah. after we'd finished. I think <clears throat> going off what I've seen recently, I think – Queensland are prepared to push the envelope that little bit more. So my the example is mm. last year's uh, was it game two up in Queensland, and the Matt uh, and the Dane Gay guy and Matt Burton fight. Mm. It was a sea of around around yeah. it, yeah. yeah. And I think that they're willing to to perhaps do that a little bit more. Yeah, that dark mm. side of it. And yeah, yeah. And pay a price for it. So I, I think they targeted Matt Burton and, and went after him. Yeah, I reckon for, they did and, too. And, they, and gay guy threw one. Yeah. And then obviously Burton's going to respond, but then they were all in there. They're all in, yeah, exactly like a pack yeah, of yeah. dogs. But, so, but but isn't isn't that the atmosphere you want to mm, play in? Like, yeah. Well, and then, and then also going out to to Homebush to watch a game versus going to yeah. um, Suncorp. Yeah. I know you like to call it Lang Park to Lang watch Park. a game. It's a noticeable difference. Well, the other thing too. James, just just on that, and it's the same sort of thing. I, I I'd I'd retired from playing for Australia, and Big Zero, my my great mate, was over there playing, and Barry McDermott got in with an elbow. Do you remember that off the tap? Do you remember? No, oh, I, no. Anyway, Barry's tough, tough, mm. but, but he got him, mate. He just went after him, and mate, that yeah. was the rules in those days. Mate, I was filthy. None of the none of the Aussies jumped in. Mm. I was filthy. And I even rang him and said, "Mate, what's going on? Mate, you just got decked." Like in a dog shot, mm. and none of, none of they all sort of that's that to me was like, but that's what I'm saying is Queensland are prepared. If <laughs> if you wanna if you wanna dance and you know dance for the devil, let's let's go. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And we're ready. Drop we're down ready. tools and we're going. We, we 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 actually want you to go come down in that mm. with us. We want you to come in that hole. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know you know when you were coming through and, yeah. you, and you talked about. The, the brutality of the game. Mm. What was it like at training for a young front rower? Like, have you so, got to have you got to prove yourself to? Uh, no, to, no, no, to the no. Group was it? Were, were, no. were those things practiced at training or was it? No, no. It was funny, you know, James. It was it was Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday morning, and a barbecue on Saturday morning. Like, it was it was like it was like work all week and train two days a week, and then. I don't know. It's not like it is now, mate. Mm. These guys, mate. These guys are unbelievable. The strength of men, and you know, I'm sure we'll talk about the games, about the game now a little bit further down the track. But I, mate, I can't believe all these dribblers saying, mate, why don't you tackle one on one and tackle around the legs and mate slide down and tackle. Okay, mate. Do you people understand how strong these people are? Mm. Mate, I seen Payne Haas last week. There were three guys trying to put him on the ground. And they couldn't do it. Mm. So how the bloody mate? It's all right. Different tackle the the cover tackle and yeah, you know it, that's. But mate, you try and hit a bloke front on, and try and put him on the ground. One out. The way how strong these blokes yeah. are. It's imp, it's it's near on impossible. Yeah, and I, I, I do you know, know you've been there, mate. You, yeah, you I, know, I know you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we look at a guy like Payne Haas, and to go, we'll just go around his hips. Clump your arms, slide down his legs, 
Like, yeah. yeah. Maybe going like that. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Just throw it out of your tackle, wouldn't he? You couldn't put him on the ground. It wouldn't. You well. You. I don't think you get past phase one. No. But the other thing too is, mate, and you were an enforcer too when you were defending. To do that one out, like, oh, mate, this is this is a, a little bit off the wayside. But mate, I played in a pack that had five internationals in it. It's easy when you got not easy, but it's easier when you're together. When, you, when you're not at one out, mate. Mm. When you when you when you when you chase like mongrel dogs, but if you're one out, mate, that's. That you know, that's why I admire Ciro so much. When we all retired, like we had Wayne Pierce, Bruce Maguire, myself, Benny, but all internationals, right? So we retired, and he went on and played for another five years. One out, yeah. And then all the other sides went, oh, good, yeah, good, this, <laughs> yeah. We can square the ledger here. But that, but you know, that that's uh, you know that that's the way it was. I don't Talking know. of the way it was, what what was it like when you go to work? In the week, because oh. I'm just trying to think now yeah. what what it would it, what it'd be like for the modern day player, or you know, an, an origin player, an international player. Oh, like to to just mate, you, you know, rock up into work and you like, wouldn't you wouldn't be able to say you'd never never worked, mate. We when I first come to Sydney, we lived in a hostel, and we used to line up, go into town every day at seven a.m. and line up, and they'd pick you to go and do a day's labouring or whatever. But Looking back on it, that's the greatest grounding ever because mm. you've got to be hungry to get out there and, you know, earn a quid for the day. Yeah. You know, the, you know these guys today, and, mate, I love that they're earning 800000 and mate, mate, I think they, earn, they should earn more. Mm. But the essence of becoming a man, of, of having to go out and grind and graft. Did you get any – Probably isn't there anymore. Did you get any different treatment? Like were you – did no, you get, did but no blokes one, talk to you about the footy. Or? No one even knew, mate. Like we, we were just young blokes playing junior, like in the juniors. Like, but then when you went, when oh you yeah. were playing great, when yeah, you were yeah. playing grade, yeah, were you still working then? Oh, we had give me jobs then. You know, we'd work in the club putting the mate, my mate Larry John Corowa. You probably heard of him, mate. What a, one of the, the greatest name. ringers ever, Larry John Corowa. The prince, mate, is unbelievable. But his job was to put the flag up in the morning at Louise Club and then 3.30 in the hour they put it down. <laughs> that was his job. But that, that's what I'm saying about give yeah. me jobs. Yeah, or yeah, you'd yeah. get rep jobs or you'd, you know, when it yeah. when it all kicked off and you started to get a bit of a name for yourself and you played a few games and all that sort of stuff, mm. all that sort of, you know, kicked off that you'd get, like we used to call them give me's. Yeah, you know? yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so that team, you, you spoke about the, the five internationals in the pack that – um, you guys at, at the Tigers are assembled. Yeah, what made you so great? I think uh, I think the captain, mate Wayne Pierce. Um, even today, mate, we're in our sixties now. We still go to him for for advice. He's that he's that he was that sort of bloke as a leader, but a leader of men in doing. Do you understand what I mean? He wasn't a he wasn't a big talker or anything, but mate, he, mate, I've never seen anything like it. This this will amaze you because I know you love the footy, right? This will amaze you. Wayne Pierce was near on near on up there with the top five front on tacklers I've ever seen. Mate, he very mate, he get up under him, mate. He was unbelievable. Anyway, Mitchell Pierce, his son, is heavier than what Wayne Pierce was as a lock forward back in the day. Really? Yeah, that amazes me. I know it's only a little tip bit, but that's the size of blokes in that now. You know what I mean? Wow. You know, you know, Wayne would be Wayne would be battling to be eighty seven kilos, but just a fierce competitor. And I, mate, you know, you know, you know, James, you've been in plenty of good packs. You get to feed off all that energy. You feed off, you know, someone, you know, trapping a team down in the corner and someone coming out of the line and you know putting a shot on. Well, that. That that yeah. I've never if had he that. He goes. I'm gonna yeah, go. Well, I've never had that excitement since. Mm. That that oh, you know that. Mm. Let's go. Yeah, this is good. You know, and kind of makes you feel alive. Yeah, it? it does. Yeah, you feel alive, mate. You know, it's funny, Wayne Pierce. So back home, we used to get some of our um, our games. Like I'm talking like under 11s. Yeah, that recorded from this video company. Yeah, and they you know make copies of them and sell them in the clubhouse. Technique and that. They put at the at the end, no, like watching yeah, so yeah. under 11s we play yeah, yeah. and they'd film it. Yeah, oh, right, okay. And they'd make copies of yeah. our games. Yeah. At the end of them, 
they put on like this uh, Wayne Pierce like skill session. Oh mate! Like and I, so I, my, yeah. my memories of Wayne Pierce yeah. is sitting at home on video and he's like showing mm. you how to do these different skills. Yeah, it's like yeah, far out. Yeah, in 1982 when the and then, and then I'm again like I'm, I met him. Yeah, when when I'm, the kangaroos I met, I went met away. him and I'm like yeah. I've, watched, I've, I've, I've watched been like do, doing this. Yeah, I know. Great. Like, bloke. Rewind, pause, yeah, yeah. stop, yeah. rewind. Like, yeah, crazy. But in in eighty two, when he went with the kangaroos, he was young. He was like twenty one or something. He was the youngest. They had Rod Reddy and Les Boyd and made all them blokes. The English, I can remember all the commentary. They had never seen anything like this bloke. Just his athleticism and you know. The story is that he he room with Sterlow, right? They were great mates. Sterlow was a bloody bloke. Slept in and. You know, did, did you know punted and did all that sort of stuff? And Wayne would be out in the corridor skipping, super fit, mad fitness bloke. He'd come home and he's he's skipping rope be in two hundred pieces. Like they cut it all up so he wouldn't make any noise while he's sleeping. And <laughs> just stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that it was a, a a collection of of indi- individuals that came together as a team. Oh. Um. One of the the other guys that. That, that that came to your team, Ellery Hanley, oh, the Pearl. Oh, my God. We'd never seen the like. How did he compare to Wayne? Oh, different, different. Mate, the Pearl, the Pearl come there. Like, we made the grand final that year in 88. If we don't play, we don't make the grand final. So we come from fifth. In, that day, in those days, it was a top five. Mate, I mentioned Larry John Coral a little bit earlier. There's only two blokes I've ever seen the like hard hill stand for. And mate, we'd run out on the ground, and the 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 hill would be a sea of orange. Well, we'd get eighteen thousand at Leichhardt, mate. People be sitting on the roofs. But when we'd run out, when when Larry John Coral would get the ball, he scored. I think it's twenty eight tries in twenty six games in nineteen seventy eight. Made the Kangaroos un- untouchable, fast. They ran in the stall gift and won that. Like no one could beat. Like he's quick. You know, unbelievable player. Anyway, so I'd see the, the crowd when Larry get the ball, they'd stand, the whole crowd. Ellery Hanley was exactly the same. He'd get the ball. I'd never seen a bloke who could run sideways mm. but as quick as he could forward. But he was unbelievable and fit and strong and, mate, give me the ball. I'm going to I'm gonna do something. Mate, he was unbelievable. But the next year we if he cuz we we made we made the grand final 88 89 we got beaten in both of them right if he plays with us in 89 cuz he took the money and went to west the next year but that mate that's all right he come back and played cuz they used to play in the off seasons from england and all mm. that sort of stuff if he plays with us mate we're a bigger chance of winning and it went to extra time yeah so mate he was but he got knocked out bad in the in the 88 grand final terry lamb got him but yeah. But you've probably heard the story. But in, in those days, the no one really, no one really blinked. Oh well, he's he's got God. He's got plenty of blokes. And little Bar got him with a little stiff arm. Mm. And you know that was that was it for him. He was our best player. And we talk about putting people on the chopping block, mate. Mm. Obviously, Canterbury went and said, "Well, you know what? We we're gonna, just, yeah, we gotta we gotta take this bloke out." Yeah, before he happened. came out, did you know much about him? I did. Yeah, you, we, you we, played we, against I played him. against him for England and, uh, when he was playing for England. We were playing for Australia, mate. He was, Mate, superstar, but he was he was mate. I think I think he might have been. I think he might have started playing for England like nineteen eighty four or something. Like he, he was like way you know playing international footy way before yeah. Like the Kangaroos come over, you know. Mm, he, he was very young and he he kept it. He, he played Freak. for such a long time. Freak. There's some famous commentary. You, you know, it's funny you say about moving sideways. Yeah. There's a try he scores at Wembley. I think yeah. it's, I think it's for Wigan. Yeah. And the commentary is like, "There's Hanley ebbing away, and he's just like yeah. running sideways, like Un- unbelievably. Awesome. Oh, it, it's unbelievable. Yeah, but super, super powerful. Like he was, he was like, you know, all the athletes are today, how strong they yeah. are, and all that. He was that back then. Well, but when he came over, he came over not, oh, maybe like 2013, 2014. Yeah, and I seen him over here, and he. I know, he's, 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 50, he's like that. Yeah. He's 50. <laughs> I know. Well, he was. And then yeah. He's still like, I know. Jesus Christ. I know. Like, Look at he, this looks, yeah. he looks like mid 20s. But what a player, you know, like, you know, you, you get the opportunity lucky enough to play with some blokes that just light up the arena. Like, I, mate, I, I played a lot of Origins and Test matches and that with Brett Kenny. Wow. Mm. Mate. 
But most casual bloke getting ready, he'd be the last out. He'd look like he was going to sleep. He'd walk out, you know, hands in pockets. Mate. And then what a the play. switch. Boom. He scored three tries. In, he scored two tries in three grand finals and got two disallowed in his fourth. Mm. He's just a, just a freak. Well, and you ask Wally Lewis and that, you go, mate, who's, a, who's the best New South Wales player you ever played against? So who's the best player you ever He goes, Brett Kenny. Doesn't even, doesn't even hesitate or think. He goes, Brett Kenny. So we put, we, in 86 when we went away to the Kangaroos, right, I remember not even going across the halfway line. We had, we had Sterling, Lewis, Gene Miles, Brett Kenny, Michael O'Connor, Dale Shearer, Gary Jack. Mate, mate, we, we played the Poms in the first test in 86. We went winning 28-0 at half time. Really? Mate, Gene Miles had scored two and set up two at half time. And the Poms were singing, if you want your money back, clap your hands. Mate, they were that, mate honestly, I, honestly, I'll never cross the halfway. Mate, I'm sitting there mesmerised watching mm. them and I'm playing in the team. I'm going, how good are these blokes? <laughs> Gene Miles... Unbelievable. Mm. He, he went and played with Wigan. Yeah, he did, yeah. yeah, yeah. What were you like getting ready? Uh, like you got you, so, angry, angry, mate. So you were angry. Get, starting to get in the zone. Like well, when, mate, when did you start to get into what they, not, well, your zone? Yeah, night before. My wife, i I got three beautiful boys. They're on their 30s now. Um, my wife would take, I had this big like spa bath at home and she would take the kids after we had dinner on a Saturday night, because we mainly played on a Sunday mm-hmm. afternoon. It wasn't like it is now. And she would take them over and they'd go and stay with the with my in-laws and I'd put the candles on, turn out the lights, have a have a nice hot spa, go to bed. I, I, to me, having that like hot sort of spa to go to bed, I could sleep. I could mm. sleep comfortably, not worrying about the next day. But it was it was it was eggshell stuff. Like I'm not you know, not good to be around. No, yeah. no, no, not good to be around. Yeah. You know, but um I, I don't know, James, right or wrong, that's the way I thought that people play the game. I never I, – I, I, I didn't think to be accepted, mate, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> it's, it's, it, I'm not thinking about, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking about trying to be the best that you can be. Not saying that you're the best, but yeah. trying to be the best that you can be. And that's who you think you need to be, right? Yeah. You need to be this, I don't know. Mm. Jekyll, oh, yeah. Hyde. Yeah. What about like in the change rooms? You amper people up, or you just amp no, yourself myself, up, mate? Yeah, yeah, myself, yeah, myself. Or you know, just angry, mm. angry, just like I don't know. It's weird. Would you look at the, Would film. you look at their team list and go, "I'm going after no, him"? Not, no, no, not really. No, no, not really. Would you no. have a a plan to to go out and? Not really. No, no, just mate. I um, it's funny, you know. It's funny you ask that question because I I felt like I was the only one playing against them. Do you understand what do you that? Mean? No. Well, I felt like I was the only one playing against that pack. So you wanted to take them all on? No, no, not no, no, not no, not necessarily take them all on. But I felt like I'm playing against I'm I'm playing against all these guys. I'm, yeah, I'm, right. I'm not okay. conscious yeah. of my blokes. Mm. I'm conscious of. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know if anyone else thinks like that, but that's how that's how it come come across to me. I don't know. Yeah, weird. So obviously there was a lot of what they call biff back then. Yeah, um, you did get accused of starting some. Some. Um, yeah, starting, finishing most. Starting, no, 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 finishing. No, no, like, no. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, well, mate. How much of that? You know is, the great thing about our game, James. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are. You always get got. Yeah. At one stage, you're gonna get got. Yeah, of course. That's how. I, that's how yeah. I look at it. So but then, yeah. in, in terms of going out there, yeah. how much of that is is pre-planned? How much of that is reaction? How much of that is a pre-planned reaction? Mate, a lot of it was bravado. A lot of it was, you know, like mm. a, lot, a lot of it is. Um, well, mate, if you if you really want to, mate, you really want to do this. You know what I mean. So it was a, it was a, it was a um, it was like um, a challenge, and they go all right. Well, do you you know you want to drop down or whatever. I don't know. It's I don't know. I keep saying it's weird. It's mm, a funny. It's a funny feeling. Like a funny dynamic between. Yeah, it's a weird, weird, weird thing. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you an instance, right? And, and this isn't at Leichhardt Oval. 
um, this isn't big note at all or whatever, but, you know, I always had uh, Gene Miles, uh, sorry, Greg Dowling and I, and he's a great mate of mine now, great respect. We'd only look at each other in origin and just start throwing down. Like not even like, not even talk, say anything, just look and go, I can write out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, he got um, he got Gary Freeman one day, our halfback, and he'd come to the scrum with his teeth all knocked back, you know. Mm. And uh, he said to me, Dowling got – I said, I've seen it. So I didn't even wait for the scrum to pack down. And then, of course, I was at home at Leichhardt. He got a bit of leeway. And the ref was going to send me off to send me send me this in bin because I, I flattened him, and um, uh, the ref was going to say, I said, mate, hang on, mate, he's, have a look at my half back. Look what he's done to him. I said, mate, they're the rules. If you don't understand that, you don't understand footy. And I, they left me out there. <laughs> but if I'd have been playing away from home, but don't worry, Greg got me plenty of times too. Don't worry, mate. He was a tough mate, tough bloke. Not not the biggest of front rowers, not the most imposing, but my tough. Mm. And he, mate, he, well, that, mate, I don't know if you've seen the visions of him and Greg Dowling, Greg Dowling and Kevin Tamity on the sideline in a test match. You remember not, that? No, I've not, Haven't I've you not seen, seen that? It. No, no, I'll oh, have mate, to give that a, a mate, watch. You won't, you'll have to watch it like this. It's that violent. It's maybe violent. That, 19, that, 1985, and, and Greg slips, and mate, whew, mate, she's a. She's a war. The whole game was a war. But those two guys got sent off and Greg was sort of saying to Kevin, you go first up the tunnel. And he, mate, back, oh. back, back elbowed him and then it was on again. Well, the crowd were going ape. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yeah. But I don't know, that's the way it was. Mate, I, mate, I learned a, a quick lesson, very quick lesson one day against Craig Young. Very quick lesson. Trying to be a smart ass and all that. And what did you do, mate? He, oh, I just mate. He, he he whacked Benny in the back play, and I thought, oh, mate, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna take this. He was a straight front row at the time, and mate, we had a bit of a tussle and all that. Anyway, uh, a few scrums later, it collapsed, and he fixed me up good, but didn't say anything. Mm. Just looked and then run away. But, but we we mate, he was one of my heroes when I was growing up, Craig. Uh, he was a lot older than me. I'm, I've got great respect for him, mate. Great, great front rower. Unbelievable, strong and powerful. But he, uh, we played Origin together, and I was only a young kid. And I'm, oh, I'm playing with me, one of my heroes, you know. And he said to me, "You know, y- you're all right, mate. You know, you'll be all right." Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, what, what what feeling did that? Oh, mate, that's that, a, yeah, yeah. It's it's made adrenaline stuff, isn't it? Mm. So, mate, dude, one of my heroes thinks I'm, I'm I'll be okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mate, what a what a player! Mm. Mm. Like, I, I want to try and paint the picture, especially for some of our like younger listeners. How often are the fights in Clubland? How often are we are we expecting a brawl again? Oh, there'd be yeah, there'd be blokes challenging each other every game for sure. Mm. Yeah, but mate, you know, not a lot of it. A lot of it was one on one, and yeah, you know, and Queensby rules too. You know, like yeah, you know, if you got knocked down, like. Yeah, they wouldn't go on, jump on you, and yeah, you know, yeah. go on with it or whatever. But it's like the old days in the street fights, I suppose. When, when your old man and that used to fight in the bloody, you know, at the pub or whatever. If mm. you got knocked down, it That's was it. Yeah, yeah, just it's you know, done. Yeah, it's done. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean. Then yeah, that, go back in and buy a beer, you know, yeah. <laughs> or give you a chance to get up or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. Get back up and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you think you you would go in today's game? Today's game. I'm just thinking back yeah, yeah. to yeah. You know, let's look at um, Victor Radley on uh, Anzac Day. Yes. Just gone. Yeah. Get sent for 10 minutes for... For a head clash. What, what what appeared to be a head clash. Yeah, I watched all the angles of that and I'm a little bit biased because I don't want him to change. I love the way he mm. plays. But you, in today's game. In today's game. You get all the training, that uh, all, all, the tra- all, all that sort of See, stuff. See, I, I don't know. Without... How, without um, without sounding um, over the top, I think any of the great players in the ga- in years gone by, if they had the right training, mm. if they because these guys are professional, yeah, yeah, professional, professional yeah. if they train, I would say, I would say the skills of the very best players that I played with would be equal or not better than the skills of the players today. That's mm. what I think. Yeah. 
But if you train, of course, you, you've got to have the engine. You know all about that, mate. You know better than anyone. Like if you if you got an engine, and you train like these guys do now, there'd be no reason why those great players of yesteryear. Yeah. But I'm full of mad, mad, uh, uh, admiration for the guys that play now. Yeah. Well, what what about you in today's game? How are you going? I I, I reckon I, if I had the right training mm. and all that sort of stuff, I reckon I reckon I could could go, go all right. How I'd be a I'd be a Wurira Hargrave type. Yeah. yeah. Do you think you'd spend plenty of time in the bin? Probably. <laughs> if you went like with that mental attitude mm. going in. Uh yeah. Because James, you know, you know, mate, a lot of people don't understand that, that you know, that around the streets and, you know, that watch the game. If someone challenges you and I've seen it, I've seen you play, mate. I've seen you play hundred games. If someone challenges you, yeah, well, Okay, mm. all right. Well, let's let's figure it out. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I just I, I just wonder. Do you think you would just adapt to the new culture and new well, I'd rules? Ha- I'd, you'd, ha- you'd I'd have, have to. I'd have to, mate. Otherwise, you would you wouldn't be playing, would you? Mm. Mate, I said I said the other day, the other year in commentary, and mate, people went people went ape shit about it. The South Sydney bloke, I forget what his name was, in the semi final, hit, hit a bloke with a stiff arm. And I said, in the commentary, I said, that's an old fashioned stiffy. <laughs> Which, mate, pe- people took it as if the other way around. But to yeah. me, it was like, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> 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 but, it's, but they sort of like, yeah. But that was, that was the norm then. Mm. But, mate, the game, mate, the game now is 10 times faster than when we played. Mate, uh, mate of course. Uh, but I, I will say, like the big games, getting ready for a big game against the Poms or a big game in Origin, you, you're up for it, mate. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But it, you know, club sometimes in club land, you're like, oh, you know, this, you know, I might take a couple of shortcuts here. I might do what I really have to do. You know what I mean? And, and in terms of you and the, the the top players from from your era, make it. Well, no doubt they'd make it in today's game. How do you think? You know, today's crop would go back then. Well, I suppose it's exactly reverse of what we, what we're talking about now. Yeah. They'd have to, they'd have to adapt to, um, maybe getting a few high shots if you're playing in the forwards. Maybe getting challenged a little bit more one on one physically. But I reckon they'd handle it. Would the, would they do the same training? Are we going back? They're doing the same training as they're we're doing. doing the same training. Yeah, made it. Yeah. Maybe. How do you how do you reckon um, players would react to like people staying down? Oh, mate, mate, you wouldn't stay down. Even even you know, like if you got if you got a cut on the head or whatever, they'd wrap you up and push you back out there. But that was a badge of honour. That's the way it was. That's why that's why you know, James, I'm a, I'm a little bit um, I'm a little bit sort of when you play this game. We're trying to sanitise it, but it's a collision sport. Accidents are going to happen, you know. Head clashes are going to happen, um, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I yeah, I don't I don't know how I, I don't really know how to how to react to a lot of the laying down now. I don't I don't like it. I don't you know like it. It, it was a badge of wanting to get up and not, play the ball. You're not the only one that doesn't like the yeah. the, the the staying down to. Milk, milk a, a penalty. penalty. Yeah, what, milk a what, penalty. What would the? Well, did it ever happen in your era? I don't. I, I can't recall. I it. can't recall it, mate. No, blokes. It was but, just. So, it was just completely but it's a, it's a, foreign. But that, it's, like, a, it's a badge be, of honour to get up. Yeah. Or get a cut and get your head yeah. taped and get back out. Like it's like yeah. um to get bashed yeah. and actually like play the ball to or go get again. clipped. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show this guy that I know he's gone out to clip me. But I'm just going to get up and play the ball anyway. Exactly. Well, and and, and now I'm going to try and square the ledger. I'm going to I'm going to try and square up. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're going to go into your, your commenting career, but just quickly, is it difficult mm. for you to forget who you were and the game that you played? Yes. In when you're watching today. Yeah. There's a lot of things I want to say that I don't say. Hmm. There's a lot of things that are going on in my that very small mind of mine that I'm going, but I can't I can't say it. Yeah, you know, you know, everyone says we've got freedom of speech. Well, have we really? Mm. 
But if something really gets to me, I'll say it. Yeah. I'll give you an, I'll give you an example. The, the bloke's walking off the mark now and the referee's stopping the game and sending blokes back. If you go off the mark, penalise them. I hate that. And the six agains. You're not a fan? I don't. Well, I am, but I want to know what it's for. I'm, I'm a fan watching the game. Even though I'm doing the commentary, I'm going, that six again on the, on the line, I'm going, what was that for? Mm. I'm a fan. I'm going, mate, if you tell me what it's for, then I go, oh, yeah, okay, I'll get it. Yeah. Mm. But what, what, are, it, what about the actions of the, the, the players? Is there any anything that particularly frustrates you? The laying down. Mm. The laying down, if you get hit, you, you can tell when a bloke's milking it. But is that the coaches telling them to lay down? I reckon it is. I think is. it's the environment. Is it? With, I think the fact that the bunker intervene. Mm. Mm. Don't get I, me, I think they don't know. Don't get me started on the bunker, mate. I'm not a fan. Well, I am, but I'm not a fan for watching something. Mate, how come we can do the commentary and 90%, 99, 95% of the time come up whether it's a try or not? Why do we watch it for half an hour? Like I'm going, <laughs> mate, that's a try. Or whatever, you know. I see six I see six replays and I can generally tell whether it's a try or not. They're watching it twenty times I'm going, oh my god. I guess it's the the, the justification would be we can't afford to miss anything. Cause do you remember a couple of seasons ago? Mm. Souths played the Bulldogs. Yeah. And somebody scored for Souths and like it was a clear try, or it looked like everyone's like, Oh yeah, of course it's a try. try. Yeah. And then the wing is like accidentally put his foot up on the they've line. Not, they've not yeah. picked it up. Yeah, and it's like right. Well, we've got to review every try, like the Ronaldo Molotalo one a couple of on oh, his arm, last week. When his arm was on, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No one sees that. Yeah, and then oh, hang on. Yeah, but 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 no, yeah, that's fine. But I'm I'm saying they watch it twenty times instead of. Yeah. Can't you make a decision after you watch it five or whatever? I don't know. But the the, the proper angles of the count, I understand what they're doing. But mate, uh, to me, to me, I'm I'm it, it, it sort of drives me mad. I'm going, mate, mate, can you please make a decision? Please. Make it quicker. <laughs> Do you ever verbalise this in the commentary? Part? No, I don't. That's just, what I'm saying. Mm. I'm just thinking it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it. <laughs> Fair enough. We're going to take a quick break from the show to talk about our new partner, AG1. Now, I love AG1. I've been taking them for about six months now. I've noticed multiple health benefits. My gut feels better. My focus is more clear. Um, my intensity in my workouts has gone up as well. And this is all thanks to AG1. It's the one-stop solution for all your supplement needs. I love starting my day with a refreshing glass of AG1. So simple. One scoop in the glass, some cold water. Give it a stir. Or if you want to go fancy and get the shake, do that as well. But it's so easy. It takes out the guesswork with your supplement requirements. If you miss it in the morning, take it at night. I never miss a day with AG1 and I am reaping the rewards from it. And the best thing about it is it tastes great too. And you can really start to feel the benefits. Have it as a simple part of your routine and you'll see the benefits too. So if you're looking to make positive change with your health outcomes, check out AG1. You will not be disappointed. There's 75 high quality ingredients Take care of all your nutritious needs every single day. It's a small habit that you start and get big results. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So to check out this exclusive buy-round listeners deal, head to athleticgreens.com forward slash buy round. That's athleticgreens.com forward slash buy round. Your only place to get the free one year supply of vitamin D from Athletic Greens plus five free travel packs. Make sure you check it out or click in the show notes where we'll have that link for you as well. Please don't delay and get your Athletic Greens today. <laughs> we'll get to the commentary stuff um, shortly. Um, back to your, your days at the Tigers there. How'd you not win one? <sighs> mate, um, yeah, mate, you're right. Um, sorry to just No, no, it's that true. No, don't be sorry, yeah. mate. It's it's mate, I understand. It's it's a it's still a sore point. Mm. When you look at the Canberra side that beat us, they would be arguably the greatest club side ever. When you look at, you know, Bradley Clyde, Lazarus, 
Steve Waters, Gary Belcher, Mal Meninga, you know, Ricky Stewart. Sure, yeah, Ricky, yeah. Stewart mate, it's a great sight, great, great sight. We were, mate, we were beating them right up to 36 seconds to go in the, in the grand yeah. final, 36 seconds. My mate Kerry Hemsley, who I played in the front row for with for a decade, he went up to get the Magnum. He went up the sheds to get – mate, we've won. We've finally won. And then he come back down and Chicka Ferguson scored with 36 seconds to go, which which levelled the scores, 14 all, and then went in extra time. But me and Ciro had been all – I'd yeah. been taken off first and then Ciro had been taken off and then, mate, it just – yeah, mate, they won fair and square. Mate, yeah. they had a great side. You could never – you could never um, – you could never be disappointed by being beaten by them, you know. Mm. But, but James, I would have rather played in the worst grand final of all time and won than playing the best one of all time and lose. Yeah, no doubt. Just one. Just mm. one. Oh, mate, they went on to win six premiers. Oh, mate, just give us one, you lousy buggers. Mm. Just one. We just want one. Yeah, but mm. it wasn't the B, mate. Mm. Tough to take. I, I mate, I hate grand final day. Still, 30 something years ago. Mm. Cranky. Mrs. Takes the kids around mm. the, the <laughs> You're you back know? in the spa. Yeah, I'm, growling. I'm growling. I'm growling, yeah. Yeah. What, what, about, what about the one you got suspended for? Uh, that was 88. Um, we were playing off for fifth position and I uh, I got Chris Mortimer a little bit high and um, we were on a run. Elry was playing with us. We were on a run. Um, give me exactly four weeks. I listened to the grand final over in England on the radio. Hollywood yeah, and Zorba. Didn't you go? Didn't I went you try, to England you to, try to try and get your susp- some of your suspensions. There. That's right. And they went, so got, yeah. on, take take us back. Yeah. You, what's the game and what are you suspended for? I'm suspended for four weeks for a high tackle on Chris Mortimer. Right. Right. So then I was going to Warrington anyway, so I went early. Oh, so you'd already prearranged yeah. to go. So back in the day where you could. That's when yeah, we used to yeah, 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 we, yeah. Used to, we used to play here and then go yeah. over their their English winter. So I was already signed to go to Warrington anyway. Mm. So I thought we'll go early, and the, the plan was that that I would be picked in the A team. You know the A team, yes, yeah. picked in the A team, and then that would add two more weeks that I would have played in the A team onto my suspension. Then I could fly back and play in the grand final. And they, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. Uh, when, it's a great when, plan, mate. It's a great plan. Brilliant, genius. genius. Like you know, ha- hang on, let's get creative here. <laughs> When yeah. did you know it was that got kiboshed? Uh, I think it was a grand final week on the Monday. So had you, or something. Had you flew back to Australia? No, or not? You, no, you I hadn't. In... I was waiting to. I was waiting to hear. Um, I was waiting to hear whether mate will be and, and John Quayle too. He's great. I love John Quayle. He's a good bloke. Him and Ken Arthurson went. Mate, you can't be in. You can't serve suspension here and then serve suspension over there. Add on the games. I said, but Keith Barnes is a genius. We love Keith. But it didn't work, mate. And then I uh, – Hollywood and Zorba were the great radio callers at that time and they did a deal with Telstra because they were my mates and they did a deal with Telstra for me to listen. I listened to the, the game on the phone. On, Over, on the phone? Yeah, in England. Just listen to the game like that, on the phone. Telstra. Yeah. Thanks, Telstra. Are they your major sponsor still? <laughs> they will be after that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, dear. That is um... – Yeah. So that yeah that was yeah that was it, yeah. yeah. Would you have done anything differently for the, with those teams? <sighs> no, no, no. I, mate, I played the game because I love the game. Mm. I, mate, I would have, I would have played for nothing. Don't tell Barnsley and that. Mm. <laughs> but I just love, I love playing. I remember, I remember as a kid, every afternoon, mate, we'd go down to the paddock. We had a paddock across the road, and it'd be the neighbours. It'd be twenty on twenty. <laughs> Sometimes. James, we didn't have a ball. We'd play invisible footy. Honestly, oh, mate, I used to score a lot of tries from the doubles. <laughs> but, mate, every afternoon it would be 20 on 20. And then in the summer it would be 20 on 20. We'd mow a pitch yeah. in the park, get the mower out and put the stumps up and we'd play. We'd play all day. So the love the love of the love of playing, actually playing the game and being – mate, did, did you ever do that you, when you were a kid? Like, you, mate, I'm, I'm half a beaten. Oh, I'm, mate, I can remember uh, yeah. um, me and uh, one of my mates who I played with, I think under eight or under nine, yeah. two ginger ale. Do you, I'm ginger, he's ginger, and we used to pretend to be um, Blacklock and Mundine. There you go. There you like, go. Couldn't be 
could be any further opposite in I know. looks. But that's who you like. But, but we, we used to love watching those two play for the Dragons. Yeah. Like just the, the speed, the excitement, the chip yeah. and the chasing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like we pretend to be sounds. Did you do all the nah, flips and that? No, 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 no. <laughs> but I was like you to do a forward roll. <laughs> met, well, you know, you played the invisible ball. I had the invisible cloak on. Oh, did you see that flip? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, yeah, it is. It comes from a, a place of love. Yeah. It really does. It comes um, deep. Deep. Mm. But yeah, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't change anything. I respect nah. that. I really nah. do. And nah. um, I know what you mean about those grand finals being tough days. Jesus yeah. Christ. Um, before I know, I keep saying this. We're going to get into the commentary stuff. That infamous image of patting the ref on the yeah. head. Yeah. No, it's not infamous. <laughs> Maybe a fortune, James. <laughs> did, did. Yeah, I bought the rights to the photo. You know. Did you? Yeah, I did. I got the rights to the photo. So every gig I do, I sell them that thing. Ah. You like that? <laughs> you like I that, like that. I, hey, I do. Entrepreneurial. Who did you buy it off? I, I bought it off the, the Telegraph, News Limited. I bought the, uh, the rights. Kind of. So a photographer's taken it? Yeah. So I bought, I bought the rights years ago off it. Wh- yeah, when? Yeah, I mean, 30, 20, 25 years ago. How much did you pay for it? Oh, I can't mm. remember. Not much. Not much. I've made a lot more out of it. <laughs> but, mate, the, 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 how, how that all started was um, – Arco and Bozo used to run the whole game and we were playing at Brookvale and the penalties were 14-4 against us and it was a, to get into the semis and all that. And I, like, I was like, mate, this is, I, I, I always like justice and, and things being fair. And I, I, I just, mate, this, this is a rort. We can't win. And I just like pat him on the head as if to say, you know, this is a, we, we can't win here. You ca- you're carving us up. And then, you know, then I walked off and I give it to the touch judge and it was a TV game and blah, blah. There was big blow-ups and... What, yeah. was the, what was the fallout like? It was bad, mate. They were gonna, mate, they were going to rub me out of the game for touching a referee. But I said, I did, I, I was doing it as in a... Um, I, was, I was doing it as a sign of we can't, we can't win. That was in my head. I wasn't, being, I wasn't being disrespectful to him or anything like that. What I was doing was... Trying to show everyone that this this was this wasn't right. Did, what did, was happening to us? Did you have like um, a tribunal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went in there. I went in there, mate. And I'll and tell what you what. I'll tell you, you got what, four games. Right? I got four games and five thousand dollar fine. That was a, that was the thing. But I I, I I I will tell you that the touch judge and the referee saved me. Oh, did they? Oh, because they just said, mate, that's just him. Just and you know, because Wayne Pierce is there go. Don't worry, he'll be right in a minute. He's he's just blowing a gasket. He'll be right into the ref, you know. Yeah. So they they knew virtually what I was like. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what who, it was. Who mate. was calling for you to be rubbed out? Oh, every, mate, media, mate, mate. This, but you can't you can't touch a referee. But if you went on the context of why I touched him, you would understand. It wasn't a it wasn't a uh, it wasn't a thing to be against him. It was a thing about. That we can't win. Mm. Was there like TV cameras at your house and stuff like that? Like oh, there mate, would it be was, today. It was mayhem, mate. It was mayhem. It was terrible. I, I, I felt more sorry for my wife. Yeah. Um, you know, because we were driving up the hill and <laughs> away from the ground after I heard it. And mate, she's the most beautiful person ever, mate. My best friend, you know. But I'm driving up the road and and I said, "Gee, you're quite darling," you know. And she goes, "You have finally lost it." <laughs> oh, that even made me feel even worse, you mm. know. What's wrong with you? What you know? What's wrong with you? Why have you? You know? Why are you like? I, I couldn't answer her. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know. Why do you? What? I don't know. Why do you do things on spurs of the moment? <laughs> I don't know. It's madness. Yeah. Yeah. It's madness. I'm not fully. Yeah. I'm not a full quid. I'm yeah. Just I'm not, got a screw yeah. loose. I'm a, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm a snag short of the Barbie, as they say. <laughs> yeah. The road. Hey, the driveway doesn't go all the way to the road. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Did you feel fortunate to just get the four games? Oh yeah, mate. I thought. Like, where, where, where was your head at going into the my tribunal? Head, like, what are you, what are you thinking? My head was at the media, the way that they talked about it, the way everything was, uh, they were saying that, mate. Maybe this is the last game I'll ever play. Maybe they're going to hench me. Was there a negative response to the fact that you only did get four games? Do you or know what, Jason? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Not uh, maybe. 
Yeah, because you know now, like Maybe. people react. It's like, oh, yeah, no, that's, like, an, yeah, that's uh, not an yeah. off. It's an off. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. too much. Yeah, I, I reckon, not to my face, but I reckon a lot of people would have thought that's not enough. Yeah, but it, but but in the context of why I did it, mm. if you that. understand why I did it, then. But I didn't even think about it, James. I was just being like, oh, mate, this is a yeah. reward. I'm mate. You can't win yeah. here. You know, like it was like that. It was just like you I, know. I know exactly it's a what you mean. Yeah. I know exactly yeah. what you mean. We can't win. Yeah, you do. do. I know you do exactly. know exactly. Yes, I do know exactly what you mean. Hey, um, we did go and touch on Origin. I want to ask you about being coached by Jack Gibson. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mate, um, Jack Jack was the greatest disciplinarian of a coach that I'd ever come across of, uh, you know, not retaliating, not starting things and not doing all that stuff. Mate, I will, I will preface this by saying Jack and I – got on great and everything after I finished playing. We did a lot of charity stuff together and da 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 Mate, I, I think he's an unbelievable coach. I liked him as a bloke. But we played the first game. I, I forget what year it was. We played the first game in Melbourne. Um, and, um, mate, we warred all game. New South Wales won. Um, but I was in all sorts, mate. I was fighting with Wally Lewis and, mate, he put a couple of tacks in my head and, you know, all that sort of stuff. He was a tough competitor. But... Queensland, Queensland would give it to us, and no one really retaliated. And I'm like, "Well, bugger this! I'm I'm not going to put up with this. I'm going to try and do my best, you know. Not that I not that I won all the time, but I'm going to I'm going to stand up for us, you know. Anyway, the second game comes, we go to the medical, and Jack calls me in his office, says, "Mate, I'm not picking you for game two in Queensland." I said, "Why, mate? We we won in game two. He said, "Mate, I'm going to pull you out and say you got a hamstring injury or whatever." and I'm going to pull you out of the game. You're not playing. So I didn't play in the next two games. And then Bobby Fulton was the Australian coach. Mate rings me, mate, you ready to play for Australia? We're going on a tour to New Zealand, you're in. So what it is, just different uh, different ways that people look at look at different things. But, mate, you know, mate, I don't like Jack, mate. He, mate, if you have a look at coaching records, you've got the greatest record of all time, along with Wayne Bennett. Did you, did you feel... Anger towards him. Oh, mate, I was filthy. Filthy. Yeah, but mate, you know, what you know, what do you do? The coaches the coaches say is the say, you know. Yeah. We're not gonna pick you, mate. Okay, sweet. And then you go to Australia, obviously you've got this reputation. Yeah. Playing for the national team. Yeah. Did you um you said Bob Fult um Bobby Fulton? Bob Fulton was the the coach. Did he try and temper that? No. Open slather, test matches, mate. Open slather. It was just on. Do what do what you want to do what you want to do, mate. You, I need you to do this or that or whatever. So, mate, will I be in the team next week? He goes, "Yep." Okay, mate. Okay. If that's what you want, let's 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 dance. Yeah. That's why I love. That's why I loved him, mate. I, and mate, he was my hero growing. Up. I was mentioning him and Langlands and that. They were from Wollongong. Like, yeah. And I get to play under my my hero. You know what I mean, mm. Bob Fulton. Wow. Playing test match, and he's telling me, "Mate, I need you to, I need you to do this or that. I won't go into detail." But yeah. Okay. Go out there and be okay. yourself. Yeah. What you, do. you, mate. Let's go. Mm. But you know that you know, you know, mate. There's a difference in playing a test match than there is playing a different like club game or whatever. <laughs> the, the 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 players that understand that can, you know, go up another level or yeah. whatever. Than playing club footy or whatever. Yeah, there yeah. is a huge. It's a difference. different. There's yeah. a different, mm. yeah, different mentality, a different scope, a different way to play. Uh, but but as I, I said a, a little bit earlier, I I played the way I played because what I saw when I was a kid is that's how I thought you played. Yeah. So if you don't play like that, you're not you, you're not playing like them. Mm. It's a, it's a bit of a copy sort of copy and paste or copy, a bit yeah, of yeah. respect yeah. for the past. Yeah. But mm. I, yeah, I don't even know about it, whether it's that you know. Like, I got yeah, it's a, it's a. Well, that's that's what front rowers do. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. What about those um, on those Aussie tours? Mm. Like we spoke about earlier, they were they were very long. You played club game. You yeah. played some of the club sides Unreal. in the week. Best time um, of my life. Yeah. Best time of my life. I loved it because, as I said a little bit earlier, we used to get up and watch the English Australia play England. Mm. Yeah. And then going over there and just going, wow, we're playing, uh, we're playing Halifax and St Helens, and we're playing Wigan, and we're playing, you know, wow, 
Mm. These these guys playing today, I reckon one of the biggest things that they're missing out on, mate, Australia, Australia playing St Helens was as big as the Test match. They took it as, <coughs> mate, we've we got a chance to chop these blokes up mm. before the Test match. Yeah, we're yeah. going to, we're going to, you know. And it's, I suppose it's a bit like the it's a bit like club sides that maybe beat the All Blacks in the Rugby Union when they're touring. Mm-hmm. Like it's, mate, you're playing against the Aussies, you know. We're playing against the Aussies. Let's get a piece of them, mate. Some of the club games were, mate, were a lot slower and everything than the Test matches. But mate, I'll tell you what, you had to have your wits about you because mm. they want to chop you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so- soften you up for the. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're trying to do England's job. Aren't but you, they? but can you imagine? If St Helens or Wigan or whatever beat Australia, that's that's bragging rights forever. That's yeah, legendary. Yeah. yeah. Like we, you know, the day St Helens beat Australia or, yeah. you know. What about in the um, – any roommate tales? Obviously it was a long – well, a, a different, a very different era and um, mm. things were different back then. Mate, I, 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 um, I roomed with Glenn Lazarus. Did you? Yeah, what a player, mate. I'll tell you, I was, uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you a couple of stories, but he um, he won my admiration. He was just coming through and um, we got beaten Wembley in the first test match and um, Bozo called me into the office. I like, well, here we go. He said, mate, um, um, who do you want, you know, like, what do you reckon? He said, I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop Martin Bella. What do you think about bringing Glenn Lazarus in? I said, mate. Even if you're going to drop me, I'm at the back end of mine and you kept them two in, it doesn't matter to me because I'd been there. I said, but I'll tell you something. I said, Lazarus is going to be one of the all-time greats. So anyway, we, we play in a game on the Wednesday night because we used to play Wednesday, Sunday in the test matches. So we play against someone, I can't remember what it was, and he got a cut. Now, you'll you'll a lot of people probably won't appreciate this, but you will. He gets 30 stitches here. So 15 inside, 15 mm. outside there. And I said to Bozo, you've got to pick this bloke, mate. He's got to be in the next test. This is on the Wednesday. So he gets this cut. And you know in test matches and that you, you clash heads every time. So when we're packing, we ain't packing like getting our heads. Mm. We're packing like, you know, hitting – well, clashing heads. He played in the full test match in his first ever test match in the second test in 1990. I think he was the man of the match with that – with that cut on his head clashing every and you mm. you actually know what I'm talking about oh, because yeah. you've had that sort of stuff and yeah. you know the feeling of it. Mm. And he just, mate, he just bit down on the mouth guard. I'm, mate, the performance was unbelievable. Yeah. And then, of course, starting from that, he wins, mate, he wins five premierships mm. or whatever. Everywhere he went, he won. Mm. You know what I mean? What a what a what a player. Yeah. What a tank. Just mate, you know, we were talking about Payne Haas a little bit earlier and before the cameras come on. Payne Haas is, is 23. He's going to go down as one of the greats. But, mate, he's got a long way to go to catch this bloke. Or mm. well, even his record, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. you've got a long way to go yeah. to, to catch it, you know? Yeah, no doubt. He was a great player. Did you play against him? No. James? No, no I didn't. Um, what about th- those tours? Lots of games, playing against club teams, but like I say, different era. How was the um, – you bring your drinking boots on them? <sighs> we were sponsored by 4X. And Winfield Blues. <laughs> it was sponsored by Winfield back in those days. So there's cartons of cigarettes. That were like, I remember when I come to Sydney, a bloke named Ray King that I played all my juniors with, and he was it's our coach. You know what, mate? What? It, it's it's mad that isn't it? Because that was just the norm. It was the norm. Like I can remember the Challenge Cup being sponsored, but the Silk Cup Challenge Silk, Cup. Silk Cup, hundred percent. But na- like, people wouldn't need. Be able- Get their head around that now. Mate, we had fridges full of it and cartons of cigarettes, right? So Ray King, who coached me from under sevens to under seventeens, right? Great mate of mine. He's an old footy player, mate. When I went to Sydney, he said, he goes, two things that ruin footballers. He had a bunger and he went, this and this. <laughs> <laughs> but then, So we go on a tour. We've got a mezzanine floor, you know, it's yeah, like you've yeah. got the jukebox and the pin, pinball machines and snooker tables and all that and fridges full of Forex. Fridges full of it. You couldn't drink it. It was that much. Yeah. And what, what do you think, like a couple of nights a week? What do you mean? You. Oh, mate. I don't know. Is my wife going to watch this? No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, mate, I reckon, I reckon we'd have – 
we'd drink not not super heavy, but you'd have a beer five nights before, you know, five nights of the mm. have, have two off and then play a game or whatever. <laughs> So you took the four? Did you take the forex to England with you as well? Yeah, they sent it over. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, because you can't get it there. Yeah, forex and Winfield Blues. They sent the forex and, the, and the bungers. <laughs> Who's got Mate. the bungers? Yeah, <laughs> we and you're just allowed to smoke. Well, in there was the team. a few. You'd, well, you'd smoke a few. in the team room. There was as a well. few blokes, mate. Oh, mate, I played the test match with Cliffy Lyons. He had to smoke at half time. <laughs> mate, they said, you... "Where's Cliffy? Cliffy!" He's <laughs> blowing up into the into the what's the name? Just to take the edge off. I don't know. He's probably dying for a bunga. <laughs> what a player. Did you see him play? No, I didn't. Oh, I know the name silky, very well. Silky skills. Silky. Mm. He's a bit. Oh, mate, who's like him now? Oh, jeez. Mate. Yeah, probably probably no one. He was silk. Mm. Yeah. Who, um, so who are, you, who are your roommates on toys? I, I, like? room, I room with Lazo. Uh, on the move. On who, who would be your, your most entertaining roommate? Oh, Ciro, the buttocks, the buttocks, Ciro, and what funniest what? man? Oh. Just mate, just always up the always up the tricks and up to no good or whatever. You know, unbelievable. Even today, like we still go and do speaking gigs together, and like we have a great time. We were down in um, Griffith only a week ago. It was unreal. Just driving down there, just talking crap. You know, mm. yeah, unreal. But the mateships and the mates you make out of footy and that, like, like Benny's Benny's one of my great mates. Mate, people people don't like Benny because he's a he's like a multi millionaire and cocky, but he's the best company you've ever had if you go out for a drink with him and that. Yeah. But people are jealous. Like, I don't know, if people are funny, you know. Yeah, I, do, I know what you mean. Yeah, en- envy's like a envy. Yeah, green with envy. Green with envy. Green with envy, mate. Mm. Yeah. Can Can you talk too much about what? Like, can you give us an example of, like, some of the shit that would go on, like, in the rooms, in the mezzanine floor, like, or is it just what happens? Oh, or... mate, re- mate, we'd have WrestleMania. I'll give you an example. Like, I don't know, he might, he might, I don't know. But he, we used to, we used to throw, like, darts at the dartboard and Sturlo and that. They used to, they used to throw the darts and see how close they could go to your feet without oh. moving. All that sort of stuff. Mm. Mate, if you got stuck in the feet a yeah, few times. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. They try to kill you. Yeah, see if you move, you know. Mm, like, yeah, yeah, just, don't flinch. Don't mate, don't flinch. Yeah, yeah, just making your own fun. Like, I'll give you an example, right? So we'd, we'd be on tour and then we'd go to France. And, mate, Alfie Langer, Chris Johns, the Wallers boys, funniest blokes you've ever met. So we'd we'd get on the drink and that and we'd play. We'd go to a forest and we'd get out on the drink and we'd play little men against big men. And they would jump out of trees and attack you. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just games, you know. Like, like they they threw you at you and wrestle you and you know, give it a year and then jump up trees again and just all on the drink and that. Yeah. Stop in the middle of nowhere and just play. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh god, I can only imagine what it was like. Little men the... against big men, mm. mate. It was mad. What What would the team manager make of you? Like, we oh, just mate, they I've, just play on. Yeah, mate. They didn't have any control over us. Mm. It was just like. I remember one day we were um, we were in France and we were trying to get into this castle disco sort of thing, and I won't mention who it is, but they had a trap door thing like that, you know. They open up and we're banging on the door and kicking it, let us in, you dogs, you know, blah blah blah. Anyway, this bloke opens up and he goes, Psh! sprayed us all with mace. We couldn't see for two days. We're all like, oh, <laughs> yeah. And then close it, yeah, close the latch. <laughs> Hell. Plenty of ways to skill at skin a cat, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or what we do, or what we do too. This is terrible, but we'd play spoons with the poms in pubs. We don't have a beer with them and that, you play know. Sp- spoons. I'll tell you, we put a big dessert spoon in your mouth, and you blindfold and you hit, hit oh, each other's heads. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. what we do is we take the blindfold off us and hit yeah, them. Just <laughs> 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 they wouldn't know, you know. Oh, dear. Just terrible things like mm. that. Just filling in time, yeah. mate. Man, filling that's in time. It, 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 filling it, in time. It is crazy. Good fun. The, the, Good fun. Like, that's it. You have to create your own fun. Have to. I used to but that builds a team too, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? That it builds, does. Yeah, that builds a team. It does. That yeah. come on up. Camaraderie. Camaraderie, yes. That's, that's the right word. It's in and the, the mateship and just, yeah. 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 Oh, and I couldn't, and I couldn't think of anything worse. You know when they used to give the captain and the vice captain their own room. Oh yeah, yeah. I could, mate. Thank no. you, mate. You want a room? It's want a roomy. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. want a roomy? Good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Who cares? Mm. Yeah, you and know, a roomy. You know, 
some people get the short story. You can't wait to hear all. Oh, about I know. It. Get them up to the front of the bus. Tell us what. Tell us what they're like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Th- those That's good. Are, those are the best. And times. even 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 James like um sing-alongs and that. Well, mm. I love music and I love every sort of music and blokes getting up the front and singing or telling the yarn or mm. what. Mate, great times. Yeah, great times. They are. They, yeah. Those are the the days you miss that like well there are lots of things I miss but yeah, yeah. um I, even that like I remember. <laughs> Not long after retiring, and I was like going through an airport with the family. Yeah. And, you know, you, you pull along the cases, yeah, yeah. and just you know, just knowing nobody's going to whip it up, you know, yeah, yeah. No one, you, no you one's going to ever. You, know, yeah. you put, pull the or bag behind. All your gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're pulling the bag behind, yeah, and you just feel your arm <laughs> twisting. Like, what, what are you doing? And it's like, oh, yeah, no, you know, and yeah, all that Not going to get that. Like, and, yeah, and it's yeah. annoying. Yeah, but it's just. And then it's you're like, right, I'm going to get you back. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, yeah, yeah let's yeah. see. Yeah. And then, or like hiding someone's, you know, someone yeah. goes to the toilet on the car when the carousel. Oh, let's hide their back. We like, were, we we're just stupid. Shit like we, that. we were playing. We were playing. This is how casual the Parramatta blokes were. We were playing a test match against um, uh, New Zealand over in Eden Park, and um, Steve Ella was a great centre for us. He was a great player with the Kenny and Sterling and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, he was a quite slight sort of bloke, so he had like. Like size sixteen shorts or whatever, and I had um, I you know mine would be like forty twos or whatever I don't know whatever whatever, and they would I, I always just put me 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 I don't know why I put me sluggos on, put me socks on, put me boots on, and then put me shorts on last I don't know why I don't know it's weird just yeah I don't know you know it's like anyway they secretly all knew we're getting ready for a test match on head button walls and carrying on and you know getting ready and all that sort of stuff they swapped my shorts with him i was trying to put them on they were all in on it and they're going geez you put some weight on, on the tour and, and they're all like this is like like five minutes yeah, before yeah. we're going out just shit like that you know <laughs> <laughs> it is ma- it's, it's madness it, ma- yeah. a lot of people who listen to this going like yeah. these tours don't sound like fun at all it just sounds it's like fun. annoying but it is it's fun it really yeah. is fun yeah. um mate you, you did have a, a an amazing career and at the end of that career mm. um, you got inducted into the to the hall of fame yeah can you tell us about what that meant to you and couldn't believe it i mm. never i never thought by idolising all these guys that I grew up and following and all that sort of stuff, in my wildest dreams that I'd ever be able to be able to do that. It's weird. It's, I don't know. Again, I say it's weird. It is. You don't, you don't sort of. I don't know. You, you, you don't. You don't ever think of yourself like that, do you? Mm. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's weird. And uh, yeah, well, mate. When did you find out? Couldn't believe it. Um, I thought it was a G up. <laughs> Uh, I, I found out uh, off a phone call. We, what they do is they give you these uh, these beautiful blazers, and you've got a million of them that you never wear. <laughs> yeah. So it's a Hall of Fame blazer, beautiful, but where are you going to wear it? So they make these blazers up, and you wear it to the fun- to the function and all that sort of stuff, and uh, and uh, you never wear it again unless you go to another mm. Hall of Fame dinner. But, um, yeah, I uh, couldn't, mate, couldn't believe it. You know, I'm thinking, mate, there's bloody a million blokes better than me or deserve it more than me, you know what I mean? Is that your proudest moment? <sighs> mate, my proudest moment my proudest moment was playing in my first ever test match at Lang Park. <clears throat> they used to line up uh, in the, uh, in the um, you know, that formation of mm. standing the long next and singing the national anthems and looking up and seeing my mum and dad there. That was, you know, that was all. You know, you know when you go like that and you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't look at yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I can't look at them. Yeah, or or getting the phone call for your first test match. You know, uh, they'd ring and they go, mate, they've just picked the teams, and before they blasted out on the right wireless or the papers or whatever, and they go, mate, um, you got to play in your first test match. Wow, you got to sit down, mate, don't yeah. you? You're like, what, yeah. what? Yeah. So yeah, that was probably that was probably the best moment for me. Mm. Well, I reckon when an 89 grand final would have been better. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, mate, to get yeah. inducted into the, yeah. the Hall of no, Fame. It's good, mate. It's good. Pretty incredible. It is good. Pretty incredible. Um, now the next part. How's a guy like you, who played like you, yeah, and also front rowers don't get the respect that I think they deserve? Like it's a bit of a, a gimme. Oh, they're tough, they're whatever. Yeah. 
you know, they can't they, they can't articulate the game. Yeah. Um, you know, they're not allowed to do captain's challenges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, all yeah, it's this a bit of a, it, yeah. it, you know, they can yeah. be a bit of an easy easy mm. hit. How did you get into the media? Like <sighs> and was it was it something you wanted to do no. as, you, as you were playing? No. No, I wasn't didn't, on the radar. Didn't even think about it. I was um Alan Jones came to to coach the Tigers, and he was mate the biggest media bloke in, yeah. in the in the. He coached the Tigers. Like, coached the Tigers, mate. Coached us in '92. Wow. I was just about finished. Anyway, I was suspended for about the 18th time. No. <laughs> anyway, um, he goes, um, he goes, oh, mate, um, Channel Nine looking for a sideline. I said, I think you, I think you could do it. Do you want to do you want to have a go at it? And I went, what? What do you do? He said, mate, just go down there and bloody, you know, just talk about the game, the weather. And I was on the sideline, talk about the game, the weather, the surface. And you're still and playing at this time? I'm still playing, but I'm suspended. Yeah. So, yeah, that was the time. When, and then out of that became the, the Born the Footy Show. So the Footy Show, we did that. We did it for 10, 10 years. It was Sterlow, me and Fatty. Very smart how they set it up. Mate, I was um, in the West. Sterling was Parramatta. You gotta remember Broncos and all that aren't in the comp at this stage. Yeah. So yeah, so so inner west, Parramatta, Manly. And us three used to do like the footy and then the footy show evolved out of it and then mate, that's how it all started. And then, you know, um, do you wanna do it? I said, Oh I don't know, what do you, how do you what, what do you do? Oh just, you know, just dribble, you know, dribble on about footy. I said, Oh, okay. And that's how it started and then yeah. I don't know. I've done radio and televisions ever since. Mm. Yeah, I have James. I don't know. I reckon. I reckon I've sussed you out. You're a believer. I reckon. I reckon there's someone somewhere looking after me. I'm telling you. You reckon? Well, I'm a hundred percent. Hundred percent, mate. How can, <laughs> mate? How can you go through doing this for thirty, what, whatever, thirty years? And I'm not saying, mate. I, mate, I know that I've got my deficiency. I know I'm not great at it. But I love it. Do you know what I mean? But I think your love of the game comes across. I think so. I hope it does because that 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 is the thing that keeps me going. Like I can't I can't believe that I'm still doing it. Like if if Steve Crawley and I, I'm being honest, if Steve Crawley said to me, "Mate, I got this year and next year to go," if he said to me, "Mate, it's time to put you out of the pasture," I go, "Mate, thank you for mate. I can't believe that I've lasted this long. I can't believe it." Here's a bottle of nice champagne. Enjoy it with your wife. Yeah, and I just. Go out into the ether. But you know what, mate? I'm like you. I'm a hunter. I'll find something to do. I'll find some little angle and I'll just keep going. I say, yeah. to, my, I say to my missus all the time, she goes, because I'm always out doing stuff. She goes, why can't you be happy doing what you're doing? I go, mate, one day I will pick you up in a helicopter. She goes, what, what, what's, what's wrong with you? I go, I don't know. I don't know what mm. it is. I'm you hunt, you I'm like a, to be bu- I'm busy, a hunter. get well, out it's there. Not even, it's not even busy. Mate, a hundred things I've tried haven't worked. Yeah. But, mate, one will. You watch. Mm. Well, I'll I'll I say think one. this is working. Yeah, I'll go, mate, it's a work. This It'll is working. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. So you, you move from the footy show um, after nine. Yeah. You go to the continuous call team. I went team. to continuous call team mm. 15 years. <clears throat> and what happened was um, – uh, that was legendary, wasn't it? Legendary, mate. mate. Unbelievable. Legendary. But, but, but we didn't have the rights and what we do, what we started to do was do what we do, what you and I were talking about before. Talk about how do you arrange your baked dinner sandwich the next day, right? Stuff like that. Yeah. Just, just blokes. Well, if, just you, but, but if you go on and you, you haven't got the rights and you haven't got the footy, what, what are you going to talk about? So we started talking about life, started talking about things that get up your nose or whatever. And then what happened was um, – um, Johnny Gibbs was calling the footy of Ray Hadley. Something happened. I don't. I don't know. I don't want to know. And they were looking for a new commentator. And Bozo, I, I wasn't even thinking about it, mate. And Bozo goes, "Mate, bloggers done the sideline. Why don't you give him a go at radio?" So I think everyone who goes into commentary now on the television, because there's two different mediums, should do a few years in radio before they learn how to go on the television. That's my opinion. Mm. But anyway, so so Bozo goes, "Why don't you give blogger a go?" And Ray went, oh, yeah. So he, mate, to his credit, mate, I, I learned how to do the commentary from him. And I learned, and it was funny how things turn out, James, because, mate, I hear like a song when someone's commentating. Do you understand that? It's the noise of the high and the low, and, that, and then I know, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's a, 
I don't know, mate. I can't. I can't explain it what it is, but I can. I can understand when he's breathing and when he's talking. Anyway, he come to my place and put an old tape on and go through it and show me how to do it. And then I was lucky enough. He taught me. He taught me a lot. And then I, I call the footy with Andrew Moore. Unbelievable. He's the same. He's a great, great, great call. I can never understand why he has never been picked up by a TV station. Have you heard his calls and that? Uh, Andrew yes, Moore, yes, I have. brilliant, yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant. But it, so, I, so I sort of learn off those guys, and then we're doing it. We're doing it for fifteen years, and then I got the flick from nine, and then I did the radio, and then I was doing this. Um, oh, it's funny how things turn out. I was doing this thing called the chopping block, on on uh, on Fox, but on their news, and mm. I just I don't know. Mate. I remember that. I just yes, do anything. I yeah, have an yeah, I have yeah. like a chopping block. Yeah, right. you, yeah. <laughs> you know, just something mental, right? Just anything. I so I do the chopping block. Anyway, Steve Crawley, who was a mate of mine from Nine, so he's the boss of Fox now. Steve rings me and goes, uh, come up to my office, I want to see you. He goes, what are you doing? Because I, I got the flick from GB too. After 15, anyway, so I started doing that. No, I wasn't I wasn't getting much money doing that, I can tell you, but it was a way for me to keep, keep in, mm. always keep in, mate. Don't blow up. Just keep in. Yeah. Anyway, so he calls me the office. He goes, mate, um, you know, what are you doing? I said, oh, mate, I'm doing the chopping block. Da, 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 da. He goes, um, <clears throat> Brisbane are playing Canterbury uh, this weekend. Go down and get suited for a suit. Get suited up for a suit. You're doing the game. I said, oh, mate, unreal, mate, on the sideline. He goes, no, no, you're in the commentary box. And that was, I think that's eight years ago. Yeah. And, and it all just started again. So I, look, I'm really one for not. If something happens to you and you, you know, a lot of times I've got the flick from places of my own fault, um, but I've never blown up about it. Yeah. I'm in the wrong. I take responsibility, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, you know, Fox took off and, mm. mate, I'm still there. Still going strong. Hang on. <laughs> I've got to be able to cross those fingers. <laughs> what um, yeah. What else fills your plate? You talk about your message. You said you're always doing stuff. What, Champion. What else um, have you got going on? Uh, mate, I work for I work for um, Shore Vision. That we do all the the ribbons and all the LED lighting and all that sort of stuff. I'm bringing my own beer out. I know you got me opposition there at the moment too. But anyway, that's a that's another story. They'll, so what okay. what's the beer? You're bringing I'm, out? I'm, oh, I'm bringing a beer out with Arthur Laundy. You know the Laundy Group. Yes. At, uh, it's called Block and Grapple. But what we're doing that's different. It's rugby league orientated. But what we're doing different, James, is we're going to pool our money. Ten percent of the profits, and what we're going to do, and no one's ever done this, is we're going to we're going to give the money back to the juniors. So nice. I, I want to I want to sort of uh, I want to leave a legacy of buying footy jumpers for kids or yeah. boots or whatever they want, you know, pads, awesome. pads or whatever. Yeah, what so. goes into into you like and and the bit do you design it taste test? Yeah, yeah, no, we've done Plenty all that. He's got yeah, he's got he's got his own brewery, so we, mate, he's in. 94 pubs or something like that, Arthur. And, mate, he's a – mate, I've known him for 40 years. I, mate, I've got a great story about about going into sales and, and, and trying to find a way, right? So when Sky Channel started, they used to – they just started off selling – and this is how things turn out in the, the great game of rugby league. So I'm selling Sky Channel, which is the race channel, into pubs. They've all got them now. So I, I, I was – on the verge of, of starting all that with Sky Channel. So I get a job selling Sky Channel. Beautiful. Going around all the pubs trying to get in. I walk into Arthur's place this day and Arthur says, uh, wait, wait, bloggy boy, you know, what are you doing, son? No, no, no. You know, I said, oh, Arthur, I'm selling Sky Channel. He said, how's it going? I said, oh, mate, she's tough. I said, mate, they think by paying for races it's a bit too much because you can watch it on telly and it's just a change of, you know, way the way people think people do things, you know. He said, uh, he said, oh, you know, uh, that's that's no good. He said, oh, I've got 30 pubs. He said, um, how about I put it in all of them for you? I was on a bit of commission too, James. So I went back to Sky and went, mate, I had 30 contracts and went, there you go. But that that to me is what footy's all about. If you really lace it right down to what it's about, it's about relationships and, and having good relationships and building them but without knowing that you can get something out of it, eventually something will happen for you, mm. and that's what that's what happened there. Yeah, and then and then I build this relationship with Arthur, 
and uh, I come up I come up with this beer idea and I went to him and I talked to him and he said, mate, because he's got a, his own brewery. Now, you know Arthur, of mm. course you do. Lovely, mate, lovely man. He's got everything and, and he's into helping people. He is. It's, like a, it's not entrepreneur, it's it's something else. Like phila- mentorship, ph- philanthropy. Philanthropist. Ph- 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 I can't even say it. But anyway, yeah, I think whatever. That, yeah, yeah. But he's into that. And when I showed him the concept and explained to him what I was trying to do and how I was trying to help kids and that, he goes, mate, I'm in. I'll be your part. I'm in. We'll brew it here and we'll do this and artwork and da da da. And that's how it, that's how it took how off. That? And about, in, a, in about three weeks' time, we'll have everything out and away we go. Nice. Beautiful. Nice. But yeah, as I said, mate, always, always chumping away yeah. trying to do something. And you've had a like, yeah. like, I think. You, you know what struck me though, like so people will see you, the commentator, you bring out the beer, and I'm sure you plan on being successful. But you know, what, so, yeah. interesting thing that you said, mm. you've tried plenty of other things and they've not worked. Not worked, and that's okay. That's and, good, and that's a great lesson for people out there. I think so many people are fa- afraid a to failure. fail. Yeah, failure. That's okay because okay, you know, mate. because this idea and and almost. Some people are just, they'd rather be safe. Yeah. They'd I'm, rather be like, oh, no, I'll just stick to what I know I never, rather than yeah. try something and it, and then you figure things out I, as they I'll go. I'll never forget Alan Jones, a great great orator, and he said to me one day, it's stuck in my head. <clears throat> he goes, Niagara Falls started with one drop of rain. That means, mate, like, keep going. Everything starts somehow or some, you know, some mm. way. Look at your podcast. Yeah. How successful it is now. What did it start with? You, an idea, you go on, yeah. you know what? I'd like to talk to a couple of old footy players or whatever. Well, I, I think I think it um, it goes beyond that as well. Mm. It's like other avenues in life. You know, yeah. you, you, you know, people that, you know, young boys and girls out there listening, they might want to strive to be an NRL player one day and go, oh, wow, all that work I've got to put in, but it starts. Yeah. Starts somewhere but they, but they, and it doesn't happen overnight. But, but, but it's the avenue too, James, of, mate, I, I mightn't be an NRL player. I've tried that but I've failed. But how about I'll be a referee or how about I be – Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Or, so the, many, or, so or, or where it it takes you to. Like I've – we, myself, Charlie and Tony have started this and who knows where it might springboard us to or divert us to but look, but, or even your beer, you know. Like, but look where it's sprung to now. Mm. Look where – look, it's only going to yeah. get bigger. Yeah. Well, we're – that's the that's the plan, but he, um, it's interesting yourself. You say that about like, you know, football is great, opens doors. You've got opens to have doors. the ability to go through them. Yeah, and then when you think you're going down a path, and then it changes. At least talk about the you know the fallout from yep. from th- certain things, and get down in the dumps. Oh but then Let's another go. opportunity comes up, and it's just yeah, it's um, yeah. But it's important that I think that that message of being. Per- you know, you go all in on something. Yeah. But then when it doesn't work. Next. Next. Or, Next. or don't, just, like don't when you're, just stay in the same. It's a bit like when you're playing in the front row, mate. You get knocked down, you get up. Mm. That's that's the whole thing of it, isn't mm. it? I get up, I go again. Mm. I'm not, I'm, don't go away. No, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go away. Up I'll get, here I go. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, mm. I don't know. That's how I, I don't know. That's how I look at life mm. anyway. Yeah. I'm going to go again. Yeah. Go again. You're sixty. You were sixty one. Sixty one on Couple Monday. Monday just gone. Yeah. What's the next ten years look like? <clears throat> oh well, hopefully, you know, hopefully, um, I, I, I'd love to, you know, keep in this sort of medium of, you know, you know, podcasts or radio. I'd, I'd love to keep. I, I'd really love doing radio. I know I've got a bad head for telly, so mate, maybe the next two years, as I said, if they say to me, mate, that's enough. I, I would like to get my my foot in. Having so, I love the game so much that having some say in the game, not not same in the game, but being able to talk about the game, be able to bring back the old legends, be able to talk to them. Um, go, mate. Who knows, mate? Who, mate? Who knows? Opportunity knocks, mate. Every you day. Spoke about travelling as well. You travelling. I got to travel. Um, you know, my, my eldest boy lives over in Ireland, so. He's got a couple of kids over there. I want to get over there. I want to go in the summer, but James, the winter, oh, yeah, the winters yeah. are killing me now, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, Although you'd only get to go yeah. in, what November, November, October, October, November. October, November. Yeah, 
Uh, I've got to get there for summer, but it's still only 21 degrees or something yeah. in Ireland. But, mm. but still, that's mate, they're all out with their shirts off at 21 degrees, aren't they? they everyone's sure are, mate. everyone's sunning themselves, and yeah, you know, I want to. I, I, you know, there's a, mate. There's so many things I want to do, mate. You know, I want to. I want to go to Italy. I want to. Oh, I want to. I, I want to have a place here that I can lock up and say to me bride, Catherine Bridget, right? Let's go to Italy for three months, mm. or I don't know, whatever. I don't know, a month or whatever. Mm. That's what I want to do. Well, mate, now you can Airbnb the pl- your own place as well, get paid for being away. That's why you're an entrepreneur. That's very clever. Mate, it is. It is. Plenty of people do it. Yeah. I, I do it. I 100%. Airbnb, we, we, if I go away with the family yeah. for an extended time, I'll yeah. Airbnb the house. Wow. Cool. But we, but you keep all your stuff in there and all just that lock it, lock it in the garage, lock one bedroom. Yeah. Away just you Just put all your gear in, yeah. Yeah, just lock it mm. and then Airbnb it out and then – we're away and takes the um, the pressure off the finances when you're away. You're yeah. not stressing out. Yeah. It's great. Fantastic. And they made it even cheaper. You stay at your mum and dad's with the family and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're always hey, thinking. No, you're wait. always thinking, mate. Right, if there's one thing I don't do, it's come stay with mum and dad. <laughs> one, a, a little, an hour visit, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Staying with yeah. them. They love the kids. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm only joking. Yeah. No, no doubt mum and dad will be listening, so... Uh, Love you guys. <laughs> Thank, thanks for all. Thanks for putting us up when we come. Um, <laughs> it's it is exciting for you for the future. Um, you've had a great career and you've thanks, been man. brilliant um, within the media. I can. I, I love your passion for the game. I, yeah, I yeah. like passionate people. Yeah. You know, mm. we don't always get it right. No. Oh my. You know, we're happy to hold the hands up. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think your passion sh- shines through. Thanks, man. And that's what makes it. Um, that's what makes you who you are and so mm. good at what you do. Mm. I just want, before we uh, get on to the three questions we ask each and every guest, each and every guest, um, summary of what's going on at the Tigers at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I think they've forgotten how to win, James. You know, you've got, you got certain blokes in your team that, you know, when you've got the opportunity to, to win, you, you know, oh, look, the fours will get you in the position, the hards have got to get you home. I just think I just think they're forgotten at the moment. I'll, I'll give you an example why I say that. Manly last week, they're winning the game with six minutes to go, whatever it is, and they make half a break through Papalihi and turns the ball back to Brooksy, hits him on the chest. If he catches that, he runs. Mate, he's quicker than what a lot of people think. He runs fifty metres a score. They win the game. I just think I just think they need that just that one little bit of luck to go their way to win that game, and you know. It's a bit like when you're battling at school, you score one. You, when you when you're behind, you score one. You score another three. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I I think that I think that culminates in what's happening with them now. That they they've forgotten, or they get into a position to win and they panic. Um, mate, they've got a lot of good young juniors coming through, but I look at it. You know, like out of two hundred juniors, you get three. that make it. it. It's a lot harder than what people think. You can't say, mate, we got this best bunch of juniors coming through. Not a lot of them make it, mate. I'm a realist in that way. Um, I per, I personally, um, and I and I love the way Benji Marshall plays and Robbie Farrow and all them. I would have made them do an apprenticeship in reserve grade or learn the trade. For, you can't you can't all of a sudden come in and coach first grade straight away, in my opinion. I don't think I don't think that's right. Uh, but you know, um, hopefully they can get a win, mate. I'm really looking forward to the Origin coming up and all the other teams have got. You know, um, you know, blokes in origin and everything, and they're tired and all that. And the Tigers have got their their main staple of players. Maybe Appy Corsell would probably be the only one that would be considered for origin. Uh, and hopefully, we we'll get a few wins in. But mate, it's it's coming, mate. I, I just feel, I feel, I feel sad that I'm a Tiger supporter, but I also feel bad for them. Do you know what I mean? Because there's nothing worse than going through, especially now with the, the media scrutiny and everything that's on your head now, you can't get away from it. Are you a passionate fan? I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm always like talking about You care about the result. I care. I care about the result. But I, I, since Balmain and West have joined to make the West Tigers, I'm a, I am was a Balmain man. So I'm, you know, I, I, I sort of... I was more passionate about Balmain than I am about the West Tigers, but they're still think, my do you think they're still my team. Do you think that's part of the problem? I know that they they won a comp in 05. Yeah, but do you think that's that's part of it? Probably not too dissimilar to you know, the issues that the the Dragons the face. Dragons, with, it's, uh, the same. it's the same, it's mate. A, the, the, mate, you're always going to be warring. 
you always all do you those observe old, that at a board level. Yeah, I do. But what yeah, well, what they did was they they join them and they go right out. We're going to forego a hundred years of the Balmain Tigers, and we're going to go forego a hundred years of the Western Suburbs Magpies, and we're going to create this new team. But those two teams never existed. I think that's what they did wrong, in my opinion. What they should have done was try and amalgamate it and keep, you know, keep, you know, all the all the legends involved in the game and trying to, you know, build up that way. They, to, for mine, they for they foregone two hundred years of heritage. Mm. Do you understand that? I do. Yeah. How do they fix it then? Is it just a case of getting a win? Do they <sighs> need to stop the board squad? Do they, need think, to, do they need to go to that model no, no, now I, that you've just suggested? No, I, I think, James, what they've got to do is find a home. We're nomads at the moment. We play at a Campbelltown. We play at a Leichhardt. We play at – mate, we're nomads. When I was playing, I'd go down the Darling Street in Balmain with the fruit shop and the butcher and everything. They all knew us. It, I, I felt a sense of belong. We're no man. We don't. We don't. We don't belong anywhere. Now, what I'm saying is, too. Don't get me wrong. If that Western Suburbs side of things, if they took the Tigers and said, you know what, the West Tigers, we're going to play in Campbelltown, and we're going to play there full time, and that's going to be our home, and that's going to be our identity. This is where we're going to belong. I wouldn't mind that. I'd love them to play at Leichhardt full time. Of course, I would. But I want them to make a decision about who we are. And where we belong. If you if you're a nomad and you're travelling around, every you don't you got no sense of where where it's at. So, despite you'd be willing to be selfless enough yeah. to go, I'm going to back the team over there. Just I I, I don't dis. I think that is uh, one of the potential solutions. Yeah. Do you think there'd be too big a backlash though from the Balmain side of things? Well, they didn't – well, we'd still be called the West Tigers. We'd still mm. be the Tigers. So I, I, I don't think <clears> – did you ever play at Leichhardt Oval, yes, James? Yes, I did. What a place to play football. Mm. See, I, I, I'm digressing a little bit here now and I'm talking about the government and stuff like that. They're giving Penrith $300 million. All right, I'm, I'm, now, I'm not against them giving Penrith $300 million, but I'm against – I'm saying to them, give them 200 right, to build your new stadium. Here's 200 Give fifty million to each of those other grounds so they can do them up. So give fifty million to Leichhardt, give fifty million to Campbelltown, give fifty million to Brookvale or whatever, or mm. or Jubilee or whatever, whatever you want to do. But don't don't alienate the game and say, mate, he's three hundred million just for them. And but we're all in the game. Yeah, we all want to we all want to do our stadium up. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. But but if if I'm if I'm thinking about it. It made it hurt me if they didn't play it like that, of course. But what I'm trying to find a home. Would you get behind that then and say, look, this, is for, this is for the greater good. We've got to do this, guys. Like, yeah. we're, we're on a hiding to nothing. Yeah. We're, we're going to disintegrate. We're, gonna, into, mate, we're, we're nomads. We're, we're, we're no, we're, I'd, rather, I'd rather have a home right. out there than be... Yeah, James, James Graham comes on the market and we're really interested to buy James Graham, right? Okay, international player, James Graham comes. I... I I think I know you well enough to know that you would be going. Well, mate, what what do you believe in? Where are you? Where are you at? What do you what? Do you, oh, what's, no, our, what's our identity? Yeah, we're, what? well, we're, we're nomads, mate. We play out of everywhere, and you'd go, mate. Thanks, but no thanks. I reckon that's a. It's a. It adds that degree of difficulty to the recruitment strategy, doesn't it? hundred oh, percent. And what I said before about you know the juniors coming through. Oh, I'm so happy there's juniors coming through, but how many actually make it? Do you think they'd be the better? In terms of you know that choice between either setting up in in Balmain or Campbelltown, yeah. with the the junior participation higher in Campbelltown, is yes. that is that why to like, be get to, our pathway system going to be brutally there? honest? Yes, yeah. But I, even even when the two teams amalgamated, the only thought that I had was that we kept the tiger. Mm. The tiger, <clears throat> I still feel alive now that the tiger's alive. Do you understand, do you understand yeah, yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Like if we didn't have a tiger and it was called the West Magpies or whatever, they had the 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 more of the colouring and the you know, all that, I'd be dirty too. That's why that's why a lot of the magpie we've got to learn to live together. That's why a lot of the magpie supporters are dirty. And I can understand why. Because oh, if they it, yeah. if it was the other way around, I'd be filthy. Mm. Yeah, if, because if it was the Balmain magpies. Yeah. So we, we we're virtually saying, mate, we're dead. We're, we're 
we are no more. Mm. It's interesting. Mm. Did you think they'd be better this season? I did. Uh, the The only thing was the only thing for me the way I was thinking was I'd never ever seen a side that got the wooden spoon get so much hype in an off season without doing anything. Like James, old building hope, mate. We we're hope. We we're living in hope. Oh, the Tigers will make the eight this year. The Tigers, and I'm I'm going, mate. I've got to see them play for. I've got to I've got to see that that effort and that uh, that that mixture of how the team's going to with the players they bought. I've got to see it. I've got to see the win. I've got to see them win. Yeah. Then I'll understand it. You know. Do you think Sheens is the right man for the job? I think. I think. In my my humble opinion, Mate Sheens has done a lot more in coaching than what I have, will ever do. I'm, I didn't go down that path, yeah. and I probably wouldn't have been good enough to go down that path. What I will say is the game has changed enormously. Um, if I was going to have Tim Sheens involved in the club, I'll have him as the overseer of coaching. I probably would have him in a different position, but that's just me. I'm just being honest. You know, if it was me, I, if it was me, I would have got Shane Flanagan, a premiership winning coach, and I would have got him to the club and to rebuild it. He re- rebuilt Cronulla he did. 10, 15 years ago. That to me would have been the uh, the logical thing, because mate, I hear all the time, oh mate, our jumpers are full, and we've um, you know we've got all the sponsorship, and mate, we're going well in our area. Okay, mate, you know you don't get it. Winning brings all that anyway, mm. but we, you got to win. You got to win games. All that other stuff is is fluff to me. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, but not to them because they're going. Oh, mate, we're flying off the field. We're flying. Yeah, but mate, you got to fly on the field. Yeah, that's, that's more I, important, that's, isn't it? I reckon it is because yeah. all that other stuff will come anyway. Yeah. If you're flying on the field, could, but you can you imagine? And I know that, mate. I know the following they got. It's unbelievable. I think they're the highest rating team mate, outside of Brisbane on TV, right? That's right. You're right. And, mate, they're following. Can you imagine if they were hovering around the top four? Mm. But all what, the, well, the, all the, the, well, you can leverage your sponsorship position when you're high, so high rating on TV. So imagine that. It goes well on on the field. Mate, they double, off, they, they double their on sponsorship. TV, yeah, yeah. And I think, I honestly think, James, that it's got something to do with the the colouring, the orange and the and the black, and they got a lot of white in their jumper now. But I think it's got a lot to do with the tiger. I think, I think, people are mystified or young kids and all that uh, uh, yeah. are transcended by the tiger. Yeah, you're probably right. Mm. Plus the the O five team. So a lot of but people. When, but, try- but even even when they started saying, "Oh, mate, we, you know, we're, we're trying to channel the 2005 team," mate, please, that's 100 years ago. The game's changed, mate. Mm. You know what I mean? Let's not let let's channel let's channel us. Let's get a let's get a home to stay at. Let's do all our stuff as a community and get everyone behind mm. us and let's go. You know. Mm. Well, I think that that's. You know, the Bulldogs um, have been in a, a difficult position the past couple of seasons and it's interesting to see Cam Serraldo come in and connect to the past. But it's an acknowledgement of the past, but it's, hey, we're making our own future. Mm. It's not, we're not trying to recreate the Dogs of War mm. or anything like yeah, you've that. You've got to respect the past. Respect and, you know, plenty mm. of plenty of people that, that have, have, have played and bled for that jersey are in and around the club, but it's about, hey, we're building you guys to be... Mm. The, the you know the next yeah you're not stuck in the past yeah yeah it's no you're right you're gonna do but now. it's but it's remember in the past you mm. know it's exactly Anzac Day the other day mate you know mm. you know people said to me oh what do you love about Anzac Day I say the silence mm. the respect you know what I mean people mm. yeah, you see that ground that mate, it's eerie for me I hear that mm. I hear that dead silence it's incredible isn't it yeah incredible. We used, have, we used to have blokes years ago that yell out, like, mate, you get garroted if you do that. Mm. You know what I mean? It's a respect thing. Yeah, I think. I think we do it well. Very well. I think mm. I've been to four games over the weekend. Yeah. You could hear a pin drop on every single yeah, one. Yeah, good is it? It's incredible. Yeah. And it's a, a credit to the. Um, it's a credit to the fan now. The fans, the public. Mm. And, and 
what an honour to be a player and be able to play oh. on that day. Mm. Yeah, you know? it's huge. Yeah. It is huge. Mm. And I I don't think it's lost on them either. I think, no, it's not. I think they get that. They get it. It's, it's huge. Educational. All right, so Block, it's been a fascinating chat so far. But each and every guest, thanks to Tui's, we've got three questions for you, our friends at the show. Tui's look after us for these three questions. I've had a few of them over my lifetime. Remember, they used to be the Tui's Blues. Do you know that? For New South Wales. Major sponsor, the Tui's Blues. Big shout out to Tui's. Love the Tui's. Mm. I put, I, you know, being honest, I prefer the extra dry. Extra dry. Oh, well. But, you know. Mate, mate, you know what? You I'll, should I'll put Tui's new on that side and extra dry on that side. So you've got. Best of both. Or yeah. maybe extra dry this side. Yeah, that's you, you like thirsty. Yeah, and, exactly. You can have, yeah. a, have a stubby. Mate, that, that's a big can, that. It is. Limited edition. Ooh. Um, Beautiful. Anyway, on to the questions. Yes. Um, football does. Football doesn't exist. Where are you at? What What does the Stephen Roach in Wollongong end up doing, mate? All my uh, a lot of my mates went into the mines and all that sort of stuff. Um, I had um, some great mates that ended up running the mines that I played footy with, uh, Michael LeBoyce. I don't know. I think he's retired now. But uh, mate, I think I would have done something around the steelworks or the mines or. Physical uh, hard labour style. Well, probably I wasn't smart enough to do anything, uh, you know, like a physio or a, or a – <laughs> might have been a butcher, might have missed a few fingers or something like that. But, yeah, I, mate, I would have done something. I, mate, I would have done something because I was always that – I was always driven and footy just happened to be the thing that I was – that I loved the most. I don't know. But, you know, it's, it's amazing too, James, if you're good at, if you're good at one thing – in life, how many things that you might have been good at that you haven't tried? Yeah, that you don't focus on, yeah. Yeah. Were you very much a singular-focused individual when it came to your football career or like when you were growing up um, in those you know, very influential, impressionable years, mm. late teens, were you just like, I'm all in on football? Yeah, once I got the opportunity to go to Sydney, I was just playing with all my mates since we were under sevens. Once yeah. I got the opportunity at seventeen to go, well, that was that became that became the focus because you know what, I I I used to go back I used to go back down home and I'd go to the Crown Hotel, and people would say to me, "Oh, I see those guys. They could have been no, nah, they mate." I, I used to hear all those stories, and I yeah, I didn't want to I didn't want to go back home a failure. Yeah. I didn't want to go back home and be one of those guys that was sitting in that pub going, mate, you see that bloke there? Oh, mate, he could have been, you know. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Um, the most interesting person you've met during Ooh, your time. Geez, uh, mate, Doesn't I, necessarily need to be through football. No, no, no. I, I, I did all the Tina Turner commercials. I met I met Tina. Mate, she was a beautiful woman, mate. I think she was about 55 or something when we met her, mate. She was gorgeous. Turn it to, but I reckon the most famous, we were in France and um, Kevin Costner was making – Kevin Costner was making Robin Hood mm. and it was an Australian um, producer and he brought him along to watch us play in a club game against France and and at half time, Bobby Fulton was given his sermon and then in comes this producer and Kevin Costner. And we, mate, imagine us, we're all like, Kevin Costner, like, going out, and Bozo's going, who's this flipping out of our dressing room? How dare he come in our dressing room? We went, that's Kevin Costner, Bob. And he went, Kevin! Yeah. <laughs> 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 Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. But we were all, he was, like, it was half time, and we were all like hanging around looking at Kevin going, mate, what, well, this guy's a movie star. You know what I mean? He was making Robin Hood. So, yeah, I... I reckon I reckon he's near on the most famous person I've been. Yeah. What about interesting people? Like even around the football, like, you would have had some. Mate, Alan Jones was uh, mate un unbelievably. Yeah. Mate, I, I remember. Um, I remember. You know, we'd be twenty rounds into a into a competition, and he could go back in the game one in the fifth minute, and I, I, I just. It's just like wait, this like almost mind, like a photographic moment. Mate, this mind is unbelievable, but. Mate, some of the things, some of the things he used to say to us, you know, but it was good. But uh, mate, I, I don't think I've ever met a man that would that did so much for other people that never got spoken about. Like, mate, he was a, a a very very generous person with his time and how he helped people. But 
never wanted the accolades for it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I met Kerry Packer. Mate, that was that was that was. Uh, well, I was playing in the front row. Of, like I'm thinking, wow, well, we're big tough guys. But I'd never met a more intimidating bloke in my life than Big Kerry. Really? Oh, mate, yeah, just mate, because of his just his, state? just his, not only his like his wealth and his and his uh, every, and what everyone would say about him, but mate, he was a massive man. Yeah. Yeah, just like yeah, it was very very intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, blokes like that. Um, no, I've been lucky, mate. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd have to sit down and really think about who I've met mm. along the way, you know. Mm. What about your biggest oh, – well, this is the last question. This one yeah. interests me the, the most mm. because I look, sort of looked at my own life and looked at different decisions and sometimes think about, you know, what, 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 life, could have been? what life would have been like had I have made other decisions. Sliding doors, you Sliding mean? Sliding doors style moments, yes. So one would be, for example – you know, coming to Australia. Yeah. Whether or not I back came. in yourself. Well, well if you know, what what would life have looked it. like if I'd have stayed back home? Mm. You know, just look at that and go, hmm. Yeah. Something to think about. Is there is there a sliding doors moment or or a, an episode that you look back and go, Well, I wonder what life would have been like? Hmm. I d yeah, I don't think it'd be anywhere near as exciting as it has been. <laughs> You know, like just being uh, the norm. As I, as I was talking about, you know, like I'd seen a lot of blokes with a lot more ability than I had, but they didn't chase it. Mm. I think I think the sliding door moment for me was to make the decision that you know what, I'm going to give this a crack, a fair income crack, not a not a not a fly by night one. Mm. I'm going to yeah. I, I think yeah. I, I I think that for me would probably be it because. Even though all my mates and everything and all the people I know down in Wollongong now, uh, a lot of them are still sitting there doing the same thing they were doing 20 years ago. Mm. And I, that I feel, I feel sad that they've never really, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, even you know, talk about my brothers in the same life. They're happy. They've got, the, they, they got the, the, their greatest life. But they're still doing the same thing they were. Like they never, they never chased. They yeah. never chased a dream. You know what I mean? And you did. Tried to. Yeah. Yeah. Tried to. Yeah. Well, I think it worked out. But it's well. but it's good, James. If you you know, you, I think we understand each other about how we've our lives are gone. Is what's the worst thing that can happen to you, mate? You can get knocked down. So what? Let's get up and have another go. Mm. That's how. That's what I take out of it. You know. Yeah, the game's given us a lot. <laughs> I owe the game, mate. The game don't owe me. Definitely. Mate, unbelievable. Unbelievable ride. And the people I've met and the people I've talked to and the people, you know, like people who have given you a, a, a leg up. We call it a leg up. You know, when I, when I, was, uh, when I was at Balmain, it, it used to be an old war, like, They were all wharfies and, and like tricksters and crooks and da da But they were, mate, we knew them all. They were great. It was a great... Uh, a great way to come and come from a place where, you know, you live between the mountains of the sea and you don't know anything else. It's a bit like you coming from England over here, but then coming to a place and you go, wow, I never knew life was like this. How good is it? It is. It is. The game is um, certainly giving you a lot. I, mate, I'm, never die, mate. Did, mate, live forever. Does it anger you a little bit when you hear some people – Talk the game down. Yeah, it does. Or perhaps feel like the game's not like they the game owes them something still. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I you know I, I don't think James is that many that do that. Mm. I I do I do um, get a bit cranky at people, but I don't say anything anymore that that have never done it themselves and talk about players, but. You, and I feel like, mate, I feel like saying, mate, you, you don't get it. You don't understand. You mm. don't know. You don't know what it's like to get someone trying to twist your head off, or someone trying to pull your ear off, or someone mm. trying to chicken wing you, or someone. Mm. You, you, you're talking about, like, I, I, I try to talk about stuff. I don't try and talk about stuff that I don't know about. Mm. And no opinions. We're always going to have opinions. Everyone's mm. going to have an opinion. But I, it, it sort of grates me a little bit when people. Talk about, you know, oh, that bloke not, hasn't got any courage or he mm. isn't, you know, without knowing what courage really is. 
Mm. Mm. I think it, it aches me a little bit when I see former players. I, I wish they, they weren't in that position with some former players are off the game. I think it's... Yeah. Yeah. Game yeah. give you everything, mate. Yeah. And, and I, well, again, the people are going through their own experiences, but for me... I'm so grateful for this game. Oh, my. Yeah. I wake up every day, yeah, mate. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, good, is it? Fantastic game, yeah. isn't and it? And still be involved in it, yeah. too. Mm. Yeah. It's a mm. roller coaster. But it is. Yeah, it's, it is. It's one I want to keep strapped yeah. into. Oh, so. mate. Mate, you've got plenty of time. Mm. Don't worry. On that, Locker. Good on you, mate. I want to say thank you so much, my Matt. Pleasure. I genuinely enjoyed that chat. Mm. Thank I you, I love mate. speaking to um, thank you. passionate people, people that you, care mate. about the game, that love our game, and you're certainly in that box. And... Um, I've learned a lot as well about your career. i um, been studying it now for, for a couple of days, putting this interview together. It's Good. great to hear it from the horse's mouth. I tell you what, I'm glad I didn't play in your era. No, nah, you'd, fair, you'd fair, have done fair, it easy, fair. mate. It's all a myth. <laughs> Half it's, it's a myth. It's a myth. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Block. Good on you, mate. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Um, we'll catch you next time on The Buy Round.